Good morning. Our agenda today is the deliberation of the ad interim appointment of the current Chief of Staff, Romeo S. Browner Jr., to the rank of General and the 29 ad interim appointments and nomination of General's Flag Officers and Senior Officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. The first meeting of the Committee on National Defense of the Commission Appointments in the second regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The Honorable Officers and Members of the Committee on National Defense, Vice Chairperson, Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Senator Francis Chis G. Escudero, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Senator Christopher Bong T. Go, Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Senator Aimee R. Marcos, Representative Jose Gay G. Padernos, Representative Johnny T. Pimentel, Senator Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Members, Representative Ferginel G. Biron, MD, Representative Albert S. Garcia, Representative Greg G. Gasataya, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senator Loren Legarda, Representative Lani Mercado Revilla, Senator Grace Poe, Representative Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Senator Cynthia A. Villar. Ex officio members, Vice Chairperson, Representative Ramon N. Guico Jr., Majority Floor Leader, Representative Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villaferti Jr., Assistant Majority Floor Leader, Senator Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Assistant Majority Floor Leader, Representative Rodante D. Marcoleta, Minority Floor Leader, Senator Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano. The chairperson is present. Thank you, ma'am. With uh, nine members present, including the chair, the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Uh, the chair would like to acknowledge also uh, the chairman of Committee of National Defense of the House of Representatives, uh, Congressman uh, Buboy Tupas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Where is she? Anyway, he's here <laughs> uh, giving support to the armed forces. Majority floor leader. Mr. Chair, I move to defer the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on May 31, 2023 and consider the same as approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Uh, being seconded, hearing no objection. The chair hears none. The motion is hereby approved. Acknowledge also the presence of uh, Senator Jingo Estrada. Good morning, sir. Again, good morning, esteemed members of this committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning today. Your committee is tasked to deliberate on the interim appointment of the current Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Romeo S. Browner Jr., to the rank of General. Uh, General Browner, please stand. Uh, acknowledge that. Thank you, sir. And your committee is like, likewise tasked to deliberate on the ad interim appointments and nomination of 29 generals flag officers and senior officers of the armed forces of the Philippines that were submitted to the committee's jurisdiction for its consideration. Officers, please stand as your name is called. Eugene Henry Z. Cabusal to the rank of Colonel Philippine Army. Salvador Henry H. Quinto to the rank of Commodore with waiver of personal appearance. Maynard G. Camarao to the rank of Brigadier General. Francisco F. Lorenzo Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General. Antonio G. Manguruban Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General. Romel P. Roldan to the rank of Major General. Ferdinand Melchor C. de la Cruz to the rank of Brigadier General. 
Joey A. Escanillas to the rank of Brigadier General. Arnel Jose J. Murada to the rank of Brigadier General. Ulysses S. Marquez to the rank of Brigadier General. Marion T. Ancao to the rank of Brigadier General. Peter B. Borgonio to the rank of Brigadier General. We also would like to acknowledge the presence of Representative Redante D. Marcoleta. Good morning, Congressman. Christopher C. Tampus to the rank of Brigadier General. Juliano C. Llarenas to the rank of Brigadier General. Jesus Nelson B. Morales to the rank of Brigadier General. Elmer B. Soderio to the rank of Brigadier General. Gulliver L. Sinieres to the rank of Brigadier General. Felix Ronnie B. Babak to the rank of Brigadier General. Dwight Stephen M. Dolnoan to the rank of Commodore. Efren F. Morados to the rank of Brigadier General. Taharudin P. Ampatuan to the rank of Brigadier General. Noe Alberto Q. Peña Fiel to the rank of Major General. Edward, Edward Ike M. Disagon to the rank of Commodore. Anton G. Abrina to the rank of Brigadier General. Andre B. Santos to the rank of Brigadier General. Freddy T. De La Cruz to the rank of Major General. Simpli Simplitius G. Adiser to the rank of Brigadier General. William F. Piñafiel Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General. And uh, Isagani O. Criste to the rank of Brigadier General. Madam Secretary, uh, before we proceed, uh, the Chair would like to acknowledge also the presence of Representative Greg G. Gasataya. Good morning, Congressman. Madam Secretary, kindly report on the jurisdictional requirements and other pertinent information relative to these ad interim appointments and nomination in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. The ad interim appointments and nomination of General Romeo S. Bronner Jr. and the other 29 generals, flag officers, and senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines dated June 1 and 22, July 17 and 21, and August 3, 2023, under consideration today by the committee, were received by the Commission Secretariat on June 27, July 19 and 31, and August 7 of 2023, and were forthwith referred to the Committee on National Defense by the Senate President and CA Chairperson Juan Miguel Migs F. Zubiri, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. On various dates, said 30 ad interim appointments and nomination were published in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and Manila Standard, and broadcast over PTV4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the new rules of the standing committees. All the appointees and nominee have complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements as provided in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the commission. Yesterday, the CA Secretary received a letter from the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personal J-1, Major General Rommel P. Roldan, addressed to the committee chair, requesting for the waiver of personal appearance of Commodore Salvador Henry H. Quinto, who is presently deployed and designated as Naval Attaché to the USA from August 1, 2022 to August 1, 2025. Members of the committee were furnished a copy of the letter, and the same was uploaded on the online database platform of the commission. There was no opposition filed against any of the appointees and nominee under consideration today. That is all, Mr. Chairman, your honors. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, that Before we proceed, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Representative Oscar Oka G. Malapitan. Good morning, Congressman. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Chair, I move that the letter requests for the waiver of for the waiver of personal appearance of the aforementioned flag officer be approved. There's a motion for the waiver of uh, personal appearance and uh, being seconded. Hearing no objection, the motion is hereby approved. Madam Secretary, please administer the oath to all the appointees and nominee present, ma'am. 
Please stand and raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, all the appointees and nominee are now under oath. Thank you. Please sit down. Um, may we now call on uh, General Romeo S. Browner Jr., the current AFP Chief of Staff, and the most senior among officers to take the seat in front. Chief of Staff. Um, again, good morning to our uh, Chief of Staff, General Romeo S. Browner, Jr. Uh, please, uh, you may give your opening statements, uh, sir, if you have any, in behalf of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mayong buntag sa tanan, naimbag nga bigat yo amin. I am uh, General Romeo S. Browner Jr., the uh, Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. And uh, today, I, with uh, 29 other generals and flag officer officers and uh, senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, appear before the Commission on Appointments for our confirmation, Your Honors. Uh, Your Honors, uh, these uh, 30 officers in front of you, or 29 officers in front of you and one officer in absentia, represent the uh, leadership of the Armed Forces of the Philippines across all major services, the Philippine Army, Philippine Navy, and the Philippine Air Force. And uh, we are here ready to defend our land and protect our people. Uh, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you, General Browner. The floor is now open. Mr. Prayers. Chair. Yes, Majority Floor Leader. Can I just have a few questions to the sure. nominees and uh, maybe I can ask the, the most senior member? Um, yes, uh, Majority Floor Leader, but before you proceed, Your Honor, can we Ask first uh, Senator Risa because he, she has another committee hearing. If, no problem. You mean, I will accede. Yes. Thank you, uh, Majority Floor Leader. Yes, sir. Uh, Senator Risa Ontiveros, ma'am, please. Salamat ka ayo, Mr. Chair. Salamat tabi, uh, Majo. Um, so, naimbaga bigat, Apo General. Naimbaga bigat yung ma'am. Uh, sir, first of all, on the... Uh, the AFP's revolving door policy and RA 11939. Uh, this committee has always been cognizant of the constitutional role of the AFP as the protector of the people and the state and the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. However, the revolving door policy of the AFP often resulted in a lack of strategic direction and continuity of purpose in the organization. In fact, for the past 20 years, 28 AFP chiefs of staff had been subjected for confirmation before this body. Their tours of duty ranging from eight days to one year and 295 days. This policy was put to an end with the passage of RA 11939, which set a fixed three-year tour of duty for key AFP officials. So, unang tanong po, General, pursuant dito sa RA, uh, 11939, you will serve as chief of staff of the AFP until 2026. You will have enough time to mold, shape, and transform our military in accordance with your personal vision and aspirations. So, ano pong primary objectives ang intention ninyong ma-accomplish uh, gamit itong almost unprecedented magnate, uh, mandate, Mr. Chair? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Um, when I took over, uh, ma'am, as uh, the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, I set forth uh, my uh, priority uh, thrusts for the Armed Forces, and it is uh, embodied in an acronym, UNITY. Um, U stands for unification. So we will have to unify the Armed Forces of the Philippines as a solid and professional organization. We will also try to help uh, unify our communities 
as we are deployed in the uh, most uh, remote areas in our country. Uh, we will try to uh, unify families by uh, making sure that our former rebels are united back with their families. Letter N is for normalization. We will focus also on the normalization of the uh, Bangsamoro region. Um, kailangan po natin uh, pabilisan yung uh, proseso ng pag-normalize, uh, particularly the uh, uh, decommissioning, disarmament, and reintegration of our former rebels. Letter I po is for internal security operations. Now that we believe that we are winding down with our internal security operations, we will have to sustain the gains that uh, we had. So, tuli-tuli pa rin po yung pag uh, ng ating armed forces of the Philippines. Bagamat nagdeklara na po tayo ng uh, insurgency-free yung ibang mga probinsya natin, uh, we will still remain in the area to uh, make sure that there will be no resurgence of insurgency. Letter T is for territorial defense. Uh, as we wind down po dun sa internal security operations natin, we will now focus on territorial defense. Uh, that means that we will have to uh, recalibrate our, our doctrines, our trainings, our organization uh, in order for us to be able to cope with the demands of uh, defending our territory. And then finally, ma'am, for why this will be for the youth, we will focus on uh, developing our youth particularly on uh, programs such as the ROTC program. So we are anticipating the uh, passing of that bill for the uh, mandatory ROTC. Naghahanda na po ang inyong armed forces. And uh, we want to make sure that we will not repeat the uh, mistakes that we had, the abuses that happened during the past when uh, we had the ROTC program. So we will now... Uh, Make sure that those who will handle the ROTC are prepared and are professional para wala na po yung mga abuso, katulad ng mga grades for sale o kaya yung mga um, um, uh, hazing, maltreatment na nangyari po nung nakaraan. Uh, Your Honor. Kaya na, General. Well, magtatanong din po ako ng huling tanong ko mamaya du tungkol dun sa mandatory ROTC. Pero dito pa rin po sa unang paksa, considering your three-year term, you will also have to confront and hopefully resolve the military pension issue during your watch. As we all know, there has been some reluctance from our uniformed personnel vis-a-vis -vis various proposals to reform their pension system. So, Paano nyo tingin na kami po sa Kongreso, ang Senado at ang House, ay best ma-address yung mga concerns na yon at uh, medyo uh, i-ease yung anxieties ng ating mga men and women in uniform, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Doon po sa huling uh, sona ng ating Pangulo, uh, he mentioned about the uh, MUP pension and that uh, his desire is to make it uh, less painful for our uh, retirees and our uh, um, uniformed personnel. So, sa amin po naman, uh, we have we have been doing consultations with our soldiers and even our retirees so that we can get uh, the consensus of uh, everyone. And uh, so far, um, as far as the uniformed services uh, are concerned, kami po, no? I... Uh, when I entered the uh, service, uh, meron na po kaming uh, contribution para sa aming uh, pension. Uh, and then it was uh, in the form of uh, RSBS uh, contributions. And then later on, it was uh, um, given to GSIS. But then after a, after a few years, it was also terminated. So uh, open naman po ang mga sundalo natin to that uh, idea of contributing. But uh, dun po sa mga proposals na linalabas po natin, sa, especially with the uh, proposals of our Secretary of National Defense, uh, Secretary uh, Gilberto Chidoro Jr., um, he wants the uh, real state of the armed forces of the Philippines to be placed in a um, trust fund so that this will be the source 
of uh, funds for the uh, pension of our soldiers and our retirees. Yun po yung uh, proposal, initial na proposal namin. But I understand that uh, there are already versions uh, that are coming out uh, from uh, from Congress, uh, which we, which of course, uh, will be uh, briefed to us uh, in later days. But as much as possible, po ang ginagawa natin sa ating mga sundalo is that we we talk to them, dahil uh, ang, ang mga sundalo naman po natin ay uh, very rational. Uh, madaling umintindi ang mga sundalo, and if it is for our country, handa po kaming uh, magsakripisyo. Your Honor. Salamat po, General. Um, and interesting po yung isang element ng possible uh, consensus, yung real estate in relation sa trust fund. Importante din po sa amin dito sa Senado, uh, trabahuin ang isang maayos na batas tungkol dito. Uh, a couple of general principles that uh, some of us are thinking of ay uh, yung as is where is dun sa mga existing pensions na sa ngayon and then moving forward contributory system sa mga bagong entrants sa ating armed forces. So we will uh, continue to rely on the AFP among other institutions makapagbigay po ng uh, inputs at gabay din sa amin sa aming legislative work tungkol dito. Yes. Um, moving on, Mr. Chair, tungkol sa military expenditure naman, particular sa NTFL CAC at saka AFP modernization. Uh, General, uh, during a visit to the Southern Luzon Command earlier this month, you said that yung nga pong principle niyo of unity focused on applying the whole of nation approach in ensuring internal security and stability in order for the AFP to shift its focus to territorial defense by, among others, modernizing to keep pace with our peers in the region. However, to modernize efficiently and effectively, we will need to think about our force structure. Uh, nabanggit nyo na rin uh, po yata kanina, the people, material, and infrastructure our military will need to satisfy the requirements of our national strategy and the exigencies of the current threat environment. So ano po yung mga thoughts nyo uh, dun sa force structure na kakailanganin natin para makamit yung national security objectives natin, Mr. Chair? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, because of the advent of uh, new technology uh, in warfare, we will have to also adjust, as I mentioned, our doctrines and our organization. For instance, uh, Your Honors, um, because of the uh, arrival of uh, missile systems, uh, which we'll be using to defend our uh, territory from uh, possible external aggression, we will have to create units uh, that will be able to uh, man these uh, modern weapons. So in the Philippine Army, for instance, uh, we, ha we are proposing for the creation of a missile regiment, uh, which will be the one in charge of uh, maintaining and uh, later on, if needed, firing these uh, weapon systems. Um, another aspect that we have to focus on is on cyber, cyber warfare. And uh, in the recent uh, Chiefs of Defense uh, conference that I attended with uh, 24 other countries, one of the emphasis that uh, was given in that conference is the importance of the cyber domain. Uh, dahil nga po ngayon, hindi lamang land, water, or air domain ang uh, hinaharap natin, or ginagalawan natin, but we also have the uh, cyber domain. And I believe that in the cyber domain, we can play equally with the other nations. Kaya po natin lumaban dito. That is why uh, this is one of the uh, focus areas that uh, we are looking into. Uh, we are going to develop our cyber command. Palalakihin po natin yung ating mga cyber groups may mga cyber units po yung ating mga major services, but we will look at uh, creating a bigger cyber command and integrating all of these uh, cyber groups that we have in the major services. Uh, Mr. Chairman, your honor. 
Salamat, uh, General. Just this July, so last month, the AFP reported a strategic victory against uh, NPA insurgents. Kaya yung sinabi nyo nga po kaninang winding down. This strategic victory with 400 of the remaining 1,800 members identified and facing criminal charges. So our armed forces were also able to dismantle the NPA's guerrilla fronts, a major blow to their operations. So given your victories against these internal threats and their diminished numbers, as well as the establishment establishment of the BARM, binanggit nyo rin po kanina in relation to normalization, we should consider how much utility and value we are receiving from the NTFL CAC's 8.64 billion peso proposed 2024 budget, considering that they have completed only 2% of their projects as of November 2022. Ano po yung opinion ninyo dun sa realignment ng portion ng mga pondong iyon sa territorial defense? Halimbawa, uh, pagdagdag ng funding para sa Philippine Coast Guard o yung buong National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, we agree that uh, mahalaga po na bigyan ng tuon yung ating uh, modernization program but we also have to focus on uh, internal security and uh, we believe that the NTFL CAC funds are very important also so that we could we could sustain the gains that we had in our counterinsurgency operations um importante ho kasi yung ma-address natin yung root causes of the problem dahil kung hindi po natin gagawin yon there is a big possibility that insurgency uh, we'll come back. So, yung mga proyekto po na binibigay natin sa mga barangay, yung BDP, Barangay Development Program, uh, in the past, it was uh, 20 million per barangay, was a big uh, boost to our counterinsurgency effort. Dahil po dito, sa mga programang ito, nabibigyan ng, uh, for instance, mga clinics, medical clinics, farm-to-market roads, school buildings, yung mga barangay po na talagang nangangailangan nito mga ito. So, uh, I believe uh, that we should strike a balance uh, between funding the NTFL CAC and uh, addressing the root causes of insurgency and also um, uh, putting in funds for our modernization as we shift to territorial defense. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Salamat, General. Alam nyo naman po siguro that uh, I fully support the AFP modernization program tulad ng namin uh, dito sa komiteng ito. But also, baka alam ninyo na mula sa simula, may argument talaga ako dyan sa NTFL CAC. Dahil tingin ko po, yung mga pondong yon dapat talaga makarating sa mga identified barangays sa pamamagitan ng DILG at mga line agencies. At ngayon, uh, sa pamamagitan din ng buong uh, NTF on the West Philippine Sea. But we can continue talking about that po in, in the coming years. Um, moving po to uh, condemning harassment by the Chinese in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, this month, the Senate passed Senate Resolution Number 718, condemning the continued harassment of Filipino fisher folk and the incursions in the West Philippine Sea uh, by the Chinese Coast Guard and militia vessels and urging government to take appropriate action in asserting and securing the Philippines' sovereign rights over our exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, and calling on China to stop her illegal activities in accordance uh, with the UNCLOS and the 2016 ruling of the Permanent Court of Arbitration. So this general has led some observers to argue that there should be a recalibration, nabanggit nyo rin po yung termino kanina, a recalibration or realignment of forces towards external defense. For example, by investing more in the Navy and in the Air Force to better safeguard our seas and waters. So... Uh, considering the archipelagic nature of our country and the growing uh, Chinese government's aggressive foreign policy in the South China Sea and continuing tensions over regional flashpoints like Taiwan, uh, ano po yung mga thoughts nyo uh, tungkol sa realignment ng ating armed forces mula sa current focus niya sa land warfare at counterinsurgency patungo dun sa uh, higit na pag uh, force projection sa pagitan ng ating mga isla at saka maritime zones, Mr. Chair. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, ang ginagawa po natin ngayon is that uh, we are also uh, trying to look into our uh, strategy and trying to uh, redefine our strategy. Nabanggit po ninyo yung projection. Uh, tama po yun. Uh, initially, our defense, the, uh, the concept of our defense was defense in depth. No, ibig sabihin po, we will defend from, uh, from uh, our land and also towards our um, territorial waters and our uh, exclusive economic zone. But this time, we are going to project our forces. So ang ginagawa po natin ngayon is that we are hardening our positions in the islands and the features that we are occupying. Sa ngayon, meron po tayong maliliit na mga structures uh, in the islands that we are occupying, pero hindi po ito sapat for us to be able to project our forces. And uh, the name of the game dito po sa uh, West Philippine Sea is uh, effective presence. Kung sino po yung uh, marami na nandyan, no? ay uh, sila po yung uh, uh, may advantage dito. Uh, that is why we are seeing uh, so many foreign vessels in the West Philippine Sea at any given time. Uh, nabanggit ko po sa isang interview that there are more than 400 foreign vessels in the uh, West Philippine Sea at any given time. And uh, yung, yung, yung barko po natin uh, from the Philippines, uh, meron po tayong, tayong uh, just a few number of uh, vessels from the Philippine Navy, from the Philippine Coast Guard, from the uh, Bureau of Fisheries, and yung ating mga fishermen. Pero talagang napakaliit po yung numbers natin compared to the other countries. Your Honor. Salamat, General. Huling tanong ko na lang po, uh, General, Mr. Chair. Uh, tungkol dun sa unity, tapos yung mandatory ROTC, kaugnay ng youth na binanggit nyo. Uh, upon your assumption into office, you spoke about the five focus areas uh, summed up as unity that you intend to prioritize as the AFP's chief of staff. You were also reported to be in favor of the revival of the mandatory ROTC program, saying that, quote, we have to prepare the youth to be able to defend our country in case anything happens, close quote. However, General, uh, with all due respect, this, this seems akin to mass conscription, solving our deficiencies in training and equipment with numbers. Uh, now, I know someone who's not a favorite of any of us, Tahlin, is attributed as having said that quantity has a quality all its own. But this sounds like we're preparing to fight the last war and not even something recent like the Gulf War, but maybe World War II. In Ukraine, we're getting an unprecedented look at how Gen Z and Gen Alpha uh, are going to wage war unless we can stop them. Binanggit nga po kanina yung new technology in warfare. So with tech, with remote sensors, with long-range fire, with drones, both on the ground and in cyberspace. For this style of war, hopefully we'll never need to wage it, we would need young people who are tech-savvy, skilled, and highly motivated not conscripts mandated to fight whether they want to or not. And as Sun Tzu, whom we all much prefer to Stalin, said, without moral factors, the willingness to fight for a cause, it might be difficult to bring a campaign to, access, to a successful conclusion. So now the purpose of a general staff is to prepare a nation's plans and contingencies for various scenarios. Sa ilalim po ng anong mga scenarios ay kakailanganin nating i-deploy yung mga reserve officers na produced ng ROTC program. At sa kapo general, uh, ganong karaming value ang nakukuha natin sa mga resources na ginagamit natin sa pag-train ng ROTC cadets na yung iba sa kanila baka hindi suitable o baka hindi inclined sa military service how much value are we getting from resources 
that we are using to train our ROTC cadets kung under isang mandatory program. Kumpara sa kung gagamitin natin yung parehong mga resources na yan para i-train pa at i-develop pa yung ating professional soldiers, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, we are now trying to uh, develop a an ROTC program that is very much different from the ROTC program that we knew when uh, we were students. Dati po kasi, uh, marcha-marcha tayo, halos buong araw nagmamarcha, merong konting kaalaman sa pag-disassemble, pag-assemble ng baril. This time, uh, Your Honor, we are going to try to professionalize even the ROTC program. Meaning, if uh, a student is um, enrolled in uh, medical fields, for instance, hindi po siya magiging foot soldier. Uh, hindi siya magiging, tra ang training niya will not be on uh, being an infantryman. Rather, sila po ay, uh, ang training nila magiging re uh, related sa kanilang field, uh, medical field. So sila po yung magiging mga medics natin, mga doctors, mga nurses, uh, when uh, their services will be needed during war. Kasi nga po, uh, yung uh, current uh, mga na numbers ng mga, mga doctors and uh, nurses natin will not be sufficient when uh, there is uh, war. The same is true with uh, our engineering students, for instance. So, hindi na po sila magiging infantry uh, soldiers as well. We, they will be trained as combat engineers. You know, they will be building bridges, they will be building our defensive positions, and so on. So, aside from that, uh, the value that we will be getting from training our youth is that we will be ready to face any challenge, whether it is man-made or natural. Uh, we all know that we face uh, these natural disasters, uh, typhoons, 20 typhoons on the average every year. So, paghanda po yung ating mga kabataan, uh, they will be able to help our country when uh, the need arises, especially when disasters uh, strike. Um, ang isa pong uh, pinaghahandaan natin dito sa Metro Manila is the big one. No? The big one. Handang-handa po yung ating mga rescue units. But again, they will not be sufficient. Pero kung handa po yung ating mga kabataan, yung ating mga mamamayan to deal with these kinds of uh, threats, then uh, we will be able to uh, be more efficient and capable of mitigating the effects of these uh, uh, natural disasters. So yun po yung, uh, yung focus area ng ating ROTC program. Uh, hindi na po yung katulad nung dati, but uh, we will really um, prepare our, our citizens uh, for any eventuality, whether it is man-made or natural. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Agyamanak, General. Um, as a last aside, uh, kahit yung bunso ko po uh, nag-nursing ngayon, magme-medicine, kaibigan po ni Jana na anak ni General Lorenzo, na opo, ni General Lorenzo, eh, siya po, yung anak ko, yung bunso ko, pagtapos niya, Gusto niya mag-practice sa V-Luna or sa veterans. Gusto niyang sumali sa AFP Medical Corps, probably through lateral entry. So, we have at least a couple of topics na patuloy po siguro tayo magde-debate in the coming years. Pero, uh, Mr. Chair, I am uh, satisfied and happy and uh, proud to support the confirmation uh, of the AFP Chief of Staff General Browner and the other officers. I'm sorry, they're all men. I wish they were women. Usually, may mga babae. Dahil nag-look forward din po ako, General, balang araw na may babaeng Chief of Staff ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. Pero sa ngayon, uh, agyaman na, kapo General, mabuhay po kayo, and my snappy salute. Thank you. Uh, Salamat kayo, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Uh, before we proceed, the, the Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Christopher Bontigo, one of the vice chairs of this committee, Committee of National Defense. Good morning, Senator Bongo. <clears throat> and also the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Amy R. Marcos. Good morning, ma'am. And also the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Francis uh, Tol and Tolentino. 
Good morning, Senator. And also the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Representative Jose Gay G. Padiernos. Good morning, Congressman. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Senator Risa Ontiveros. And the next uh, in the line of uh, to question our chief of staff is uh, our majority floor leader, El Rey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Naimbag Nabigat, sir. I was reading your bio data and uh, kind of confirm, were you born in 1968? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mm, kaya pala magaling po kayo. Incidentally, I was also born in 1968. <laughs> uh, before I uh, ask a uh, few questions, sir, uh, I would like to manifest that I have very high regard for your family because your father, uh, the late Romeo A. Browner, was a classmate of my father and my mother in UP class, UP law class nine, 1959. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was uh, presiding justice of the Court of Appeals and uh, commissioner of the COMELEC. Yes, Your Honor. So we have high regard uh, for your family, sir, and uh, thank you for your service. Um, just a few questions, sir. Under the current system, retirement pensions and benefits of MUP are fully funded by the national government through annual uh, appropriations, despite having no contribution from the retirees. Uh, in the last SONA, our president has mentioned that the MUP reform bill should be less, less painful. Yes. Uh, you know, lawmakers are now listening. Uh, we want to hear from you, sir, uh, being uh, the head the armed forces. Ano ba po ang uh, definition and acceptable po sa inyo when you say less painful? Uh, noting uh, the word painful meaning uh, a little sacrifice po, di ba po? But our president has said it should be less painful. If I were to ask you now po and we're listening, ano ba po ang tamang formula that is acceptable uh, to the armed forces po, sir? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, sir, unang-una, uh, hindi po kayo halatang uh, ipinanganak sa 1968, <laughs> parang 1975. Thank you, sir. Approve. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> but um, uh, seriously, sir, your armed forces of the Philippines has, uh, has been uh, always willing to sacrifice for our country. And uh, when this news came out about the uh, possible financial collapse of uh, our country because of the pension system, so uh, nung nag-usap-usap po ang mga sundalo, and when we did our consultations, handa naman pong magsakripisyo ulit ang ating mga sundalo. In fact, I mentioned earlier that when I came into the, to the service, we were already contributing to the RSBS for our pension. Uh, unfortunately, um, the RSBS had to be closed down uh, because uh, probably of mismanagement. But, uh, handa po yung mga sundalo natin. Now, during our consultations, as much as possible po, ay uh, hindi naman po sana masyadong malaki yung personal contribution ng ating mga sundalo. That is why our Secretary of National Defense, Secretary Chudoro, came up with a scheme in order for us to be able to uh, generate funds for our pension para hindi na po kami aasa sa ating GAA, yung ating uh, General Appropriations Act. So, Sinabi po niya sa amin, binigyan niya kami ng instructions to look at all our real estate properties and those that are not being used currently or in the future uh, by the armed forces of the Philippines. And we all agreed that all of this uh, real estate property, including the assets left by RSBS, uh, which amounts to about 44 billion pesos, all of this will be used as uh, seed money for the trust fund that will be used to generate the, uh, the funds needed for the pension of our soldiers. So, maski kami po, 
sa Armed Forces of the Philippines, we are also um, thinking of ways on how to help our country uh, deal with this, uh, yung sinasabi po ng ating uh, uh, finance department na uh, financial collapse. Dahil hindi rin po namin gusto na ang magiging rason ng financial collapse will be the pension of our soldiers. That would be the last thing on our mind. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Last August 15 po kasi, Mr. Chair, the House Ad Hoc Committee uh, already uh, passed a substitute bill to reform the MUP. Among its features is a 90% maximum retirement package based on the base pay of all MUP raising by 5% the previous package for AFP personnel. Uh, in the same article I'm reading, uh, Secretary Tidoro uh, is, I think, uh, opposed or concerned about the proposed MUP pension reforms as decided by the House Ad Hoc Committee. Uh, kayo po ba, do you share the same sentiment as the DND uh, Secretary? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, I share the same sentiment po. Uh, especially on the uh, separation of the military from the uh, other uniform uniformed services when it comes to the pension system. Dahil nga po dun sa rason na we are going to use the uh, existing assets of the armed forces of the Philippines to be able to uh, fund the uh, pension uh, that will be needed by our retirees and by our uh, personnel. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Sir, please be assured that uh, me personally and members of Congress share the same sentiment. Uh, alam namin po na grabe na po ang sakripisyo nyo and kung maaari, wala na nga pong dapat isacrifice. No? You should already be focusing your job and your family. Uh, and when you retire, uh, you should be fully compensated. However, uh, talagang uh, we really have to find ways uh, to solve this. And uh, rest assured, sir, we are finding ways and keeping in mind in our hearts uh, of all your sacrifices uh, for the country. Uh, my next question, uh, Mr. Chair, is regarding the West Philippine Sea. Uh, apparently, Chinese vessels continue to block, harass, interfere supply ships. Uh, and, you know, we congratulate uh, and laud all the efforts of the armed forces uh, having uh, some maritime uh, kakulangan in logistics. Uh, puso ang pinapakita po natin uh, to protect our sovereignty. But my question is, are you in favor of having uh, joint uh, patrols uh, with our Western allies, uh, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. We are uh, very much in favor of having uh, joint patrols, joint sales, and joint operations with uh, our ally, partners, and like-minded nations. Uh, kaya nga po ngayon, uh, as we see in the in the news, we already have the presence of uh, U.S. ships, Australian ships, and Japanese uh, ships in our harbors. And uh, lately, we have been uh, having uh, joint operations. For instance, uh, with uh, the Australian Defense Force, yes, sir, and. Uh, and other uh, nations as well. Ang principle po natin dito is that uh, if we act alone, we will not be able to uh, deal with the challenges that we face in the South China Sea and the West Philippine Sea. That is why we need to uh, to concentrate. Uh, we need to uh, focus also on our alliances and our partnerships with other nations. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Sir, with the presence of these uh, foreign uh, vessels from our allies, is it an indication that uh, it will be a regular, continuous joint patrol? Because uh, apparently, uh, you know, there is no clear agreement on uh, joint patrols. And as you mentioned, sir, it is needed. Uh, it is a good idea. And uh, we support that. But... Uh, uh, their mere presence, I think, is what? A temporary presence? Uh, we hope that uh, it will be regular and we can uh, have some sort of uh, agreement, regularity in terms of joint patrol. So, in, in a way, it will deter uh, the bullying, interference of uh, uh, the Chinese, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. 
we have uh, several agreements with uh, with our uh, partners and uh, with our ally. For instance, with the United States, we have the Mutual Defense Treaty, and we have uh, uh, mechanisms like the MDB and the SEB, uh, Mutual Defense Board and the uh, Security Engagement Board. So, lahat po ng mga activities natin na ginagawa with the United States uh, Armed Forces are in inside or uh, mentioned in this uh, Mutual Defense Treaty and the mechanisms uh, that are involved within. Now, we also have other uh, agreements with uh, the other countries like uh, Australia and Japan. At uh, pinapalakas na rin po natin itong mga agreements natin with them, including uh, the possibility of uh, having agreements with other countries other than uh, the countries I mentioned. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with the permission of the Majority Floor Leader, yes, only sir. one question in relation to the line of questioning of uh, Congressman El Rey. Uh, General Bronner, you said you were in favor of uh, joint patrols together with our Western allies. How do you expect China to react? Um, all of these are within the, the uh, internationally accepted laws, uh, Your Honor. In fact, yung UNCLOS po natin uh, at yung mga ibang international agreements natin, nakapaloob po doon yung itong mga joint exercises natin, joint activities, joint operations, and joint uh, patrols. So we are not uh, violating any international laws uh, here with this, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor. So hindi tayo, we are not worried about what China will think about this. Uh, we can go on with uh, the actions that we are doing as long as we do not violate any international uh, laws, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Don't you think China will be more aggressive in bullying us because well, of the joint patrols? Well, sa ngayon, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we are also constantly uh, in communication with our our counterparts from China. For instance, yung uh, Chinese uh, military attache is here and uh, is has been communicating with us. During the last resupply mission, ito pong uh, latest na hindi po uh, uh, na, na block yung ating mga resup resupply ships, ay uh, naki nakiusap na rin po tayo sa, sa ating mga counterparts. No? At sinasabi natin na dapat ihintunan nila yung mga ginagawa nilang mga bullying tactics, coercive and dangerous tactics in the uh, West Philippine Sea. So, meron, meron naman po tayong, uh, in fact, uh, we recognize uh, the the um, diplomatic uh, agreements that we have with China. Kaya't maingat na rin po tayo sa, in terms of uh, our military tactics in the West Philippine Sea. We recognize that uh, China is our biggest trading partner and we have uh, economic ties, relations with China. At hindi naman po natin gustong masira ito. That is why maingat na maingat pa rin tayo dun sa mga taktika natin sa West Philippine Sea, Your Honor, and we practice Maximum tolerance, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no other questions. And uh, thank you, uh, sir, for confidently answering all the questions. Uh, and just like to reiterate, I fully support your nomination. And we have I have high regard for you and your family. And we wish you all the best and good luck. Uh, salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, the CA, our CA chairperson, Juan Miguel Migs F. Subiri. Good morning, SP. Good morning, uh, Chairman. I will not propose any questions to my dear colleague, my dear friend. I'm a big fan of his work. And uh, yeah. I just want to say that he, he headed the Northern Mindanao Command for a while in, uh, when he was uh, a junior officer. And um, I fully support his nomination, Your Honor. And any questions that I may ask, we'll just do it later in executive session, possibly, or for national security concerns. So again, uh, General Bronner, more power to you, sir. And uh, I'm trying to get more recruits to your reservist command, uh, myself included. 
Thank and you. hopefully I can join as soon as possible time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Chair our Chairperson, uh, Juan Miguel Mix F. Subiri. Uh, the next, I uh, would like to uh, ask questions for, to our uh, nominee, our Chief of Staff, uh, Senator Christopher Bongtigo, our Vice Chairman of the Committee of National Defense Commission Appointments. Yes. Senator Go. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Konting uh, katanungan lamang po at uh, aside from my questions, ay gusto ko pong paringgan itong <clears throat> nasa tabi ko. Uh, baka makatulong ka rito, Senator Estrada. <clears throat> Bagamat na naintindihan ko po ang ating sitwasyon no, ng ating mga finance managers na tumataas po ang uh, budgetary needs ng gobyerno at ang posibleng paglobo na kakakilanganin po sa pondo ng Uh, para sa pension naniniwala ko na may ibang paraan para matugunan ito nang hindi maapektuhan po ang pension ng ating mga kasalukuyang mga retirees at mga nasa active uh, service uh, baka makatulong yung mga nasa executive department paigtingin pa nila yung collection sa taxes sa BAR o sa customs o baka makatulong kayo na hulihin yung mga illegal smugglers para tumaas yung collection ng uh, ating gobyerno. Huwag po nating kalimutan, nung panahon po ni dating Pangulong Duterte ay uh, dinoble natin yung sahod o tinaas yung sahod ng mga sundalo uh, sa mga entry position, dinoble sila. Yung uh, 14,000 naging 29,000 at uh, uh, nagpursiki tayong Uh, may isa katuparan po ito noong 2018. Uh, tandaan natin, marami po sa ating mga kasunduluan ay mayroon pong mga plano na sa kanilang pension, may mga utang na yan, may mga loans na po yan, at uh, nakapaglaan na po sila, na, na plano na nila ang kanilang uh, sweldo. Uh, isipin natin na iyong ikakalta sa kanila ay halos uh, katumbas po ng isang sakong uh, bigas at napaka halaga po yon napaka importante po yon sa isang ordinaryong sundalo yung isang sakong bigas na yon uh, bukod pa diyan sa katotohanan lamang po buhay po ang uh, binuwis niyan in fact kayo po karamihan sa inyo ay uh, sumabak sa gera nung uh, sa Marawi at ikaw mismo sir kayo po yung nagmula sa Sambuanga siege ay talagang uh, nagtrabaho rin po kayo doon So, yun lang po at uh, hindi ko naman dapat tanongin yung nasa tabi ko. Baka makatulong ka, Mr. Chia po ang ating chairman sa Committee on uh, uh, Defense. Yan ito, Jingoy. Baka pwedeng matulungan natin ating mga sulalo na huwag naman sanang mandatory contribution sa mga uh, retirees at uh, sa mga active uh, service. Baka nabanggit nyo kanina, may pondo po sa RSBS yung mga assets ng uh, uh, gobyerno. Not only sa Armed Forces of the Philippines. Kasama na po dyan ang lahat ng uniform personnel. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, please proceed. Uh, sa akin naman, wala naman problema, Senator Bong. Uh, if you wish na sa newly entrance lay patupad yung mandatory contribution so be it but uh, I still have to await the documents uh, from the from our economic managers no? up to now they haven't submitted any single document with regard to the MUP and I'm still uh, waiting for it but at any rate uh, General Bronner you said earlier that uh, the soldiers are willing to contribute Uh, with regard to the pension fund, but uh, uh, the Secretary of National Defense, Secretary Gibo Tudoro, has made a pronouncement that he is against the mandatory contribution, and that runs contrary to what you have said earlier. What can you say about it, um, General? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, I mentioned, sir, that your soldiers are always uh, ready to sacrifice. Even a portion of our pay uh, uh, para lang makatulong po sa ating bansa. But uh, mas maganda rin po sana 
na kung matupad yung uh, ng, ang gusto ng ating uh, Secretary of National Defense na wala nang i-contribute yung mga sundalo natin dahil meron naman pong ibang source ng pondo. In other words, the uh, the seed money that uh, the trust fund that will be uh, put up by the uh, armed forces and managed by a uh, a civilian entity will take charge of uh, the contribution the individual contribution of the uh, soldiers yun po yung idea po namin uh, mas maganda po sana yun because really while our former president increased the uh, pay and allowances of our soldiers the cost of uh, living today has also gone up. Uh, naging mahal na po yung, uh, yung pagkain, yung bigas, pati kuryente. Yung mga sundalo natin, eh, sabi nila, Sir, malaki po yung binabayad namin sa kuryente. Uh, so, talagang malaking bawas po sa sweldo ng ating mga sundalo if we will be made to contribute 9% of our pay Dun, dun sa unang uh, proposal, 9% of our base pay and even our long pay. no So sabi po ng ating mga sundalo, wag naman po sana kasi malaki po yung kaltas talaga na yun. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Well, as long as it is acceptable to our economic managers na hindi kayo magbayad ng nawala mandatory contribution, uh, I will agree to it. I will accede to it. General, Unang-una, uh, totoo ba yung balita na marami pong nagpa-file ng uh, early retirement dahil sa nababalitaan nila itong uh, pending uh, uh, bill? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, totoo po yun. Uh, tumaas po yung mga nagpa-file ng, uh, ng early retirement dahil nga po uh, they are anticipating na kapag uh, lumabas yung batas, Yung unang version po, no, they're basing it on the uh, first, the early versions. Mawawala yung indexation, mawawala yung one rank uh, higher uh, nila when they retire. Or yung sinasabi na ang pensionable age would be 57. So mag-aantay sila ng itang, ilang taon bago, bago sila makakakuha ng pension. Now, because of those uh, earlier versions, of the bill, marami na pong nag-file at uh, ina-anticipate nila ito. No? Gusto nila na mapaloob pa sila sa lumang uh, sistema. They want to uh, avail of the old system wherein they will uh, receive a one rank higher pay when they retire and the uh, indexation. So, Anyway, sir, uh, ang ginagawa naman po natin ngayon is that we are talking to our soldiers na huwag munang gumawa ng kahit na anong action habang wala pa yung final version ng uh, MUP pension law. So, Salamat. Uh, nabanggit ngayon ni Senator Jingo Estrada na gagawa po siya ng win-win uh, uh, solution at sana naman po there is always an exemption. No? Uh, uh, nabanggit ko nga kanina uh, dinoble po sa panahon ni Pangulong Duterte, pinasarapan natin sila, pinagplano na nila ito at huwag naman po sana bigay bawi. No? Ang mapakiramdam ng ibang sundalo parang binigay tas babawiin po. So, eh, iba po ang sundalo, uniform personnel natin, buhay po ang uh, isinakripisyo po nila. Anyway, full support naman po kami sa inyo, uh, General Broner. I fully support your appointment and I trust sa lahat ng ginagawa nyo ay para po sa ikakabuti ng bansa. And let me also uh, record my full support and uh, to uh, Major General Romel Roldan, ating Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel, OJ1. Siya po yung nakatutok nung pag-amend sa Republic Act 11709, yung AFP Professionalism uh, Law. Talagang uh, nakatutok siya nito. Finally, uh, na-amend po ito. At alam naman natin na marami pong nag-abang nung uh, pag-amend nung batas na yon uh, Salamat, uh, uh, Major General Roldan. And of course, uh, Major General Freddy De La Cruz, commander po ng Special Operations Command. Uh, another uh, Tanglao Diwa. Major uh, General, uh, galing rin po sa PSG ito nung panahon ni dating Pangulong Duterte. Of course, Major General Noe Alberto Peñafiel, Sambisig, ating internal auditor. 
AFP General Headquarters, Brigadier General Marlon Angkaw, ang ating uh, Brigade Commander sa 103rd, Brigadier General Felix uh, Babak, uh, uh, Mahalab uh, Class, uh, siya po yung uh, Brigade Commander ng 101st, tagal rin po itong na-assign sa Mindanao, Brigadier General Anton Abrina, ang ating uh, Second Mechanized Infantry Brigade Armor Division, Brigadier General Jesus Nelson Morales, Uh, Brigadier General Ferdinand Melchor de la Cruz, Brigade Commander ng 501st, Brigadier General Juliano Llaneras, Wing Commander ng 15th Strike Wing, Brigadier General Francisco Lorenzo Jr., Brigade Commander ng 401st, Brigadier General Antonio Mango Roban Jr., Brigade Commander ng 3rd Marine Brigade, Brigadier General Efren Morados, Brigade Commander ng 803rd Infantry Brigade, Brigadier General Arnel Jose Morada, Deputy Commander ng Army Support Command. Brigadier General William Peñafiel, Brigade Commander ng 902nd. Brigadier General Andre Santos, Brigade Commander ng 1st Mechanized Infantry Brigade. Brigadier General Guillibel Sinieres, Brigade Commander ng 702nd po sa Pangasinan. Brigadier General Tah Tahrudin Ampatuan. Uh, Assistant Division Commander ng 11th Infantry Division. And uh, further, let me manifest my support and congratulations to Brigadier General Maynard Camarao, Brigadier General Peter Borgonio, Brigadier General Joey Escanillas, Brigadier General Ulysses Marquez, Brigadier General Christopher Tampos, Brigadier General Elmer Suderio, Brigadier General Simplitius, Adiser, Commodore Dwight Stephen Dulnoan, Commodore Edward Ike Desagon, Commodore Salvador Henry Quinto, Colonel Isagane Criste, Colonel Eugene Henry Cabusao, at uh, salamat po sa inyong taos-pusong serbisyo mula noon hanggang ngayon panahon ni dating Pangulong Duterte sa Gera sa Marawi, sa inyong uh, sakripisyo sa panahon ng um, pandemya. Huwag po sana kayong magsasawang protektahan at panatiliin po ang kalayaan at kapayapaan ng ating bayan. Saludo po ako sa inyo. Maraming salamat po sa inyong serbisyo. Mr. Chair, just in line with the question of uh, questioning of uh, Senator Bong, if I can uh, be allowed to briefly follow Yes, up. please proceed. Uh, the, floor leader. the nominee has uh, mentioned earlier that there's an uh, increase of... Uh, members of the armed force willing to retire, or, I mean, submitting to retire. Ano po po yun, sir? Mga senior officers pa po ba? Uh, mostly, um, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, mostly enlisted personnel po. Habang marami pong uh, gustong mag-retire na enlisted, hindi ba po marami pa rin gusto mag-apply to be member of the armed forces? Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, uh, Dahil nga po dun sa tumaas yung sweldo natin, it's even the entry level of uh, the private, a private, is uh, higher than the entry level sa labas. Kaya't marami po tayo, maraming uh, gustong uh, uh, sumama, sumali at uh, magserbisyo sa Armed Forces of the Philippines. But more than that, sa nakikita po namin, ano, uh, it's more than just the, the monetary uh, The compensation, but uh, more yung gusto nilang, yung desire nila na mag, mag-servisyo sa ating bayan. So in short, sir, uh, to assuage the concerns of uh, uh, our people, uh, because naka-highlight po na maraming gusto mag-retire, but uh, hindi po na-highlight na mas marami pong gusto mag-apply because ako, ang dami pong humingi sa akin ng uh, recommendation po, nagpapatulong makapasok sa 9ID po uh, based in Pili Camarini Sur. So there's really you no, know, you know, Cause for concern, di ba po? Uh, people uh, who want to retire uh, are marami rin pong gustong mag-apply, uh, di ba po? Uh, the alarming uh, situation, uh, Your Honor, would be the uh, yung mawawala po yung ating senior uh, non-commissioned officers. Uh, so kung puro bata naman po yung ating uh, armed forces, it will not be a healthy organization. We also need the uh, the leadership of our non-commissioned officers. Yes, we agree. But uh, it's also an opportunity for the younger uh, officers to be promoted. Uh, there's a negative and positive side to it. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Uh, 
Yes, uh, our representative, uh, Congressman uh, Johnny Pimentel, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, Mr. Chair, I would like to react on the comment earlier made by General Browner regarding the NTFLCAC. I totally agree with him that we should continue with this program. Actually, there are misconceptions, misperceptions coming from some critics that the funds for this uh, program is being used improperly. But on the contrary, I've seen for myself that this program has benefited many of our constituents. The reason why uh, some barangays, some people in the barangays, are being exploited by the NPAs, kasi wala ho silang nakiktang mga proyekto sa mga barangays. And that is why ang ginagawa nila, ginugoyo nila yung mga tao doon, dito na kayo sa amin, dahil yung gobyerno natin, pinabayaan na kayo. There is one barangay in our province which is rebel infested for several years. Their main problem, wala ho silang tubig for the past 50 years. Nung pumasok yung NTF LCAC na programa, they were allocated because it is a conflict area, an amount of 20 million pesos. After 50 years, nagkaroon na ho ng tubig itong uh, barangay na ito, and now it is uh, rebel free. Naluwala na ho yung mga sympathizers because uh, the government has proven that they are there to take care of the constituents. It is very unfortunate that the budget of 16 billion pesos was reduced to 4 billion pesos. Buti na lang ngayon na sa 8 billion pesos. The Senate President is here. I think we should support this program because I have seen firsthand the positive impact that has uh, benefited from this program. In fact, there is one uh, area, one barangay, na rebel infest. And then it is uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, peoples uh, occupying this barangay. Wala silang school building. Binigyan ng school buildings through the NTFL Cup. So I believe that we should continue with this program. Now let me go to the uh, my question. General Browner, your position is very important. But actually the biggest challenge that you'll be facing is not the problem about the West Philippine Sea, but rather on how to end the communist insurgency. The communist insurgency has been with us for the past 50 years, more than 50 years, I believe. And in fact, we are the only country in the world na may hinaharapan na insurgency sa komunista. Maybe this problem is not being felt in uh, Metro Manila and urban cities, but in the rural areas, the communist insurgency problem is very real. Many administrations have already passed, promising that they will end the insurgency during their term. Pero natapos na po ang termino nila, hanggang ngayon yung insurgency nandiyan pa rin. In our province, so many soldiers have already died. So many civilians have already died. Marami na hong na perwisyo ng mga negosyante, marami na hong mga heavy equipment na nasunugan. And this is a hindrance to our development. In our province, do you have the community insurgency problem since 1979. It has been going on for the past 45 years at nagiging salot na ito sa komunidad natin. My question, General Browner, is what are your plans Ano ba ang mga plano natin para masugpo, mahinto na itong uh, insurgencia sa komunista? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, alam niyo po, parati kong sinasabi that the uh, best thing that ever happened to our counterinsurgency effort is the ntf -LCAP. Dahil po nung uh, nagtipon-tipon tayong lahat on a uh, whole of nation approach, we have been able to address not just the armed component, but also the root causes of the problem. And we would like to uh, recognize also the big role that our local government executives, yung mga barangay officials natin, mga mayors, mga governors, have been playing uh, in pursuit of that uh, convergence that we have uh, been uh, doing with under 
the ambit of the uh, EO70 or the NTF LCAC. So ipagpapatuloy po natin 'yon dahil dahil nga po dun sa NTF LCAC natutugon natin yung uh, basic uh, yung uh, basic needs ng ating mga kababayan especially in the uh, geographically isolated areas at uh, habang ginagawa po natin 'yan with the local government leading and with the government agencies also supporting yung inyong armed forces is is capable now of focusing on the armed element. Kaya po, uh, we have been very effective lately, Your Honor, in uh, reducing the number of the uh, the armed component of the CPP, NPA, NDF. Marami po tayong mga naging accomplishments dito dahil na rin po yung sa pakikitungo natin sa mga mamamayan sa mga komunidad. No? Sila mismo ang nagsasabi sa atin kung nasaan yung mga mga armed, armed groups, kung nasaan tinago yung mga pagkain nila, yung kanilang mga armas. And uh, recently, we have been very successful in inviting our rebels to come down, mag-surrender po sila because of the programs also that we have, yung, uh, yung ECLIP, no? Enhanced Comprehensive uh, Local Integration Program. So, ipagpapatuloy po natin lahat itong mga ito at yung mga units naman po natin, we gave our units an ultimatum again. No? Pero mukhang uh, achievable na po ito. Uh, right now, wala na po tayong active guerrilla front. We are very happy to report to all of you, uh, your honors, that we now do not have any active guerrilla front. What we have are weekend guerrilla fronts And we also have uh, a few vertical units. Ito po yung mga remnants na nag-ipon-ipon. Wala na po sila halos suporta sa mga komunidad. And the only ones supporting them right now are their relatives. That is why we are also reaching out to their relatives para makumbinsi yung ating mga rebelde na bumaba na po. And uh, so far, we have been very successful. And again, nagpapasalamat po kami sa lahat ng uh, tumutulong, lalong-lalo na yung mga local executives natin. Your Honor. General, you mentioned that the, there are no more guerrilla fronts. What about in Surigao del Sur? Parang mayroon pa yatang isa, dalawa po doon na may guerrilla front. You were the 4th Infantry Division Commander there. So mayroon pa yata, wala na talaga. Sir, uh, uh, ang, quali ang uh, classification niya ngayon is weekend guerrilla front, uh, Your Honor. Because... Uh, hindi na po full yung yung uh, suporta ng uh, komunidad dito. Nandiyan pa rin po sila. Uh, in fact, uh, recently we had uh, encounters in the area, in the whole of Karaga. Uh, but uh, your soldiers are really uh, uh, talagang uh, dedicated po sila to ensure na matapos na natin itong problema na ito. General, I have received reports that uh, in the country, They have already cleared many provinces, but uh, from the reports that I got, there are still provinces that are very critical in terms of the peace and order, in terms of communist insurgency, which is Compostela Valley, Agusan del Sur, and Surigao del Sur. Tama po ba ito? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, mer medyo... Uh, may mga areas pa rin po, uh, Your Honor, that uh, talagang kailangan natin na uh, tuloy-tuloy po yung ating uh, military operations. Hindi lang. Pati na rin po dito sa area ng uh, Bicol Region, uh, Your Honor. I'm pleased to see that uh, during your term as a 4th Infantry Division, you were uh, able to neutralize the highest uh, official who was very active in uh, communist insurgency, si Kaori, si George Madlos. However, nandiyan pa rin po yung ibang mga opisyalis nila. Nandiyan pa si Maria Malaya, nandiyan pa yung si Kabong in our other who are still active. Kaya let me go back to my previous question. Ano ba ang plano ninyo dito sa Surigao del Sur para matapos na natin yan? Because they are still there. Gumagawa pa rin sila, meron pang uh, about several months ago, may sinunog na naman na, na equipment doon. 
And then may pinatay na naman silang mga civilian. And more than that, they're still asking, uh, uh, they're still extorting uh, money from uh, from businessmen, from contractors. And that is why I've said it is a uh, very hard for us to develop hanggang hindi natin nasusog po ito. Hindi wala ba ba kayong plano na dagdagan ng batalyon doon sa Surigao del Sur? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, pinag-aaralan po natin lahat ito. Uh, in fact, uh, dun, dun po sa utos ng ating Pangulo na recalibration of our internal security operations, we will be focusing on these uh, areas. So, magdadagdag po tayo ng mga resources dito sa mga focus areas na ito. Uh, hindi lamang po uh, in terms of personnel or units, pati na rin po mga logistics and financial resources. Uh, in general, while it is true that the insurgency problem has been reduced uh, uh, drastically, but still, nandun pa rin yung threat, nandiyan pa rin di sila. Hanggat hindi natin maubos yan, eh, hindi mawawala yung problema. Nandun pa rin yung uh, ikang uh, harassment nila. And you know that. You've been there. You have already uh, re uh, received reports on that. So, sana, bigyan nyo ng prioridad yung Surigao del Sur. Lagyan nyo ng, kung pwede, mga anim na batalyon. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, before. Line, General Browner will proceed. Uh, Senator Bongo? In, in line with his uh, questioning, uh, Karaga region kasi yung kay Congressman na uh, Pimentel. Di ba sa Karaga region po yun, sir? Di ba insurgency-free na po ang Davao region ngayon? Ano po ang ginawa nyo sa Davao region na naging insurgency-free na po siya? Na pwede nyong gawin rin po sa Karaga region? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Ang ginawa po natin sa Davao region uh, because uh, uh, about uh, 10 years ago, yun yung hotbed ng uh, insurgency, nandun po lahat. So ang ginawa po natin is uh, we declared it as a priority area and so resources were poured into uh, the Davao region. Nagdagdag tayo ng mga units uh, at mga financial resources para matapos natin yung problema. This time na insurgency-free na po yung Davao region, hindi pa rin po natin iniwan doon because we have to sustain the gains, but we have transferred some of the units there. And in fact, we extended already the area of Davao to include some of the regions, uh, the provinces in uh, in Bukidnon. So, para po uh, makafocus naman yung ibang units natin dun sa mga uh, focus areas. Like, uh, of course, the 4th Infantry Division uh, and uh, the Honorable uh, Johnny Pimentel knows that... Uh, we have uh, focused uh, our resources uh, after po nakuha natin si Kaoris dun sa Bukidnon area, nag-shift nag tayo dito sa Karaga region, uh, Your Honor. Sa Bukidnon, insurgency free na rin po ba sa Bukidnon? Uh, hindi pa po, Your Honor, but uh, we are uh, working uh, very closely with the uh, local government and uh, and uh, also with uh, the other government agencies. With the uh, Senate President uh, Subiri uh, support, kaya uh, kaya yes. Actually, I, I mentioned you mentioned my province. Uh, we first of all, we would like to congratulate the AFP for a job well done. They've not totally eradicated the communist insurgency there, but they've brought it down drastically. Um, alam mo, I was, uh, and just a one-minute interjection kay, at the time of Senator John, uh, Congressman Pimentel. Uh, I was a 29-year-old freshman congressman at that time na naalala ko noong 1998. Naalala ko, ko dun sa isang barangay namin sa Santa Filomena, Quezon, Bukid noon. I do my barangay consultations. Lahat ng barangay pinupuntahan ko. That's a whole day hike and then doon ka sa hapon, pababa, gabi na. Uh, wala pang kapsada noon. I remember clearly, and I asked my 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 staff, nung pagkanta po namin ng lupang hinirang, halos kalahati ng crowd hindi tumayo. Nakayo ko. Nakaano lang, nakaupo lahat. Sabi ko, oh, ba't hindi nakatayo itong mga to? Sabi sa akin, boss, ano yan? Sa kabila yan. But you know, we continue to do, I had no escort, so we continue to do our consultation and all that. But through the years, 
and I'd like to put on record yung NTFL Cup has been a great success. Because ngayon, may kapsada na doon. May, during the time of uh, President Digong, may kapsada na doon. Palabas na po ng, if I'm not mistaken, the Davao area, yung kapsada na yun, or going to Cotabato area. And yung mga tao dati, kung 2 pesos per kilo yung transport nila na kanilang mais, upland corn and upland rice, na yun, 25 centavos na lang per kilo. So, tuwan-tuwa sila. And then, of course, because of NTFL, they were given lights, they were given water systems, they were given brand new health centers, daycare centers. Malaking bagay yun. It's winning hearts and minds. Am I correct, General? It's winning hearts and minds. And I've said that many times. The insurgency, the increase in insurgency, at, in a way, is a fault of the politicians. But see, we are not being able to, we were not, we were not able to give the basic services that they need in the barangays. Then comes NTFL CAC, which basically addresses the problem of insurgency in the far-flung barangays. Marami na ingit sa atin sa mga, sa mga area na walang NTFL CAC. But the truth of the matter is, once you contain the peace and order problem there, once you improve the peace and order problem there, investments come in. Ngayon dun sa Santa Filomena, may mga karaoke na sila dun, karaoke. It's become a very productive Barangay, I was so surprised as from the first time I was there 25 years ago. Kaya, um, in a way, it's not only armas at paglalaban pag, uh, itong mga, uh, mga bayani natin dito. It's, we have to also win the hearts and minds by putting the proper infrastructure in place. Kaya, uh, yun nangyari nga sa mga nahuhuli po nila na officers ng New People's Army dun sa amin is because Dati, hindi nagsusumbong yung mga tao sa barangay. Ngayon, nagsusumbong na. Pag merong armado, automatic, tawag kagad kay Colonel, kay Lieutenant. Boss, may mga armado dito. Dati, ayaw nila. What? Para kay, sabi na, bakit pa sila natawag? Eh, wala naman silang pakinabang sa gobyerno. Ngayon, natutuwa sila. Nandiyan na ang tulong ng gobyerno. And I continue to support the efforts of um, uh, General Browner and the rest of the AFP that we can win their hearts and minds without having a single combat, having a single combat mission. Let's ask them to come to the fold. Hindi naman, hindi naman to, ano, hindi naman sila, hindi naman marami sa kanila, hindi naman um, die hard na uh, ideological, ano, ilan lang naman yun. The rest is because of their, the hunger in their stomachs, as uh, the Estradas would say, uh, a, hang, a, a hungry stomach knows no law. So, yun, tulungan natin yun. And we should also continue to work with the IPs because yan ang nare-recute na, re na yun. Dati, ideological forces na yun, it's our indigenous peoples. But with NTFL, kak, marami po sa kanila ay na yun, balik ka gobyerno na. So, keep up the good work and I fully support your position on the NTFL. Kak. If we can increase the budget, even in the Senate, we'll try to increase it, uh, Congressman Pimentel. So, marami salamat. Thank you for the intervention. Thank you. Thank you, Senate President. Mr. Chair, may I continue? Please may proceed. Um, General Browner, you mentioned earlier that uh, the Davao region is already insurgency-free. Hindi kaya lumipat yung mga NPA galing Davao pumuntang Surigao del Sur? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Meron po tayong mga reports na ganun. No? Yung mga remnants ay naglipatan. No? Uh, they transferred. Uh, kaya nga po, uh, even yung mga high-value targets natin, hindi na po yung mga dating, in fact, uh, uh, may mga nahuli tayo na mga high-value targets dito sa Luzon, even Metro Manila, na dating mga commanders doon sa Mindanao. That's why, General Browner, I really envy the several provinces like Bohol and the provinces that already insurgency free. Bohol before was really a problematic area in terms of communist insurgency. E sana naman, you are now in a position to solve this communist insurgency in our province. E galing ka rin naman po doon sa area niyo. E sana, e, ang request ko lang ho in behalf of my constituents, dahil kami po ay hirap na hirap na ho talaga. Marami na ho namatay doon, marami na na perwisyo dito sa mga communities do. Kung pwede lang po sana, um, bigyan ho ninyo ng pansin. 
uh, I was serious when I said, baka pwede niyong dagdagan ng batalyon doon, eh dagdagan niyo ng batalyon. Apo. Let yes. me go to the last question, Mr. Chair. Um, in your resume, uh, I observed that you were uh, the PMA uh, commandant also. Yes, Your Honor. You were assigned. How long were you assigned there? Uh, one year and two months, po, Your Honor. And uh, accordingly, you institutionalized some uh, reforms for the eradication of hazing. Uh, was it totally eradicated or nandiyan pa rin ba yung hazing na yan? Uh, what, uh, according to uh, the superintendent uh, of the PMA, Your Honor, and the cadets themselves, uh, na, wala na pong hazing, uh, Your Honor. But you should always continue to monitor it, uh, General Browner, kasi marami na ho nang nangyari dyan. Uh, palagi lang sinasabi na wala nang hazing. But after a while, makikita po natin, mararaman na malalaman na lang natin, may namatay na naman. So I think you should put somebody there who is really, you know, um, dedicated to eradicate hazing. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, actually that is my question, but before I end my interpolation, we have, uh, from the roster of uh, nominees, we have members uh, of the Fraternity of uh, Free and Accepted Masons in the Philippines. And I would like to acknowledge their presence because we are very much honored uh, for their promotions. So when I call your name, uh, please come forward to be recognized. Brigadier General Efren Morados of Hancock Lodge Number 311, Fort Leavenworth. Brigadier General Arnel Jose Morada, Tayabas Lodge Number 43, Tayabas City. Brigadier General Anton Abrina, Mount Iforao 98, Katbalogan Samar. Mas Major General Noe Alberto Peñafil, Daet Lodge Number 247, Daet Camarines Norte. Brigadier General Ferdinand Melchor de la Cruz, Das Marinas. Lodge number 346, Cavite. Colonel Isagani Christi, Nilad. Lodge number 12, Manila. And Brigadier General Gulliver Senieres Das Marinas, number 346, Cavite. In behalf of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the Philippines, we would like to manifest our full support for your confirmation on your promotion in your present positions. You have uh, made our fraternity very proud and rest assured of our full support in all your endeavors. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, congratulations Chair. also to my general dads. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Sorry. Senator Aimee Mark. Yeah. Um, following the example of Representative uh, Pimentel, and since we're in the mood for endorsements, may I heartily endorse, therefore, a proud son of the Cordillera, General Browner here for our Chief of Staff. Also with him are General Babak, uh, Burgonio, Camarao, Criste of Ilocos Sur, De La Cruz of both Ilocos Sur and Isabella, and the rest of the Ilocanos here, General Freddy de la Cruz of Abulog, Cagayan, Llarenas of Santiago, Isabela, Manawag, Pangasinan, Brigadier General Ulysses Marquez, General Penafel in Lalo, uh, General Santos, whose mom is from Pangasinan, as I well know, Colonel Cabusao of Bani, Pangasinan, Commodore Dwight Dulnoan of Nagilian, La Union. Yes, may we endorse these proud sons of the North. Thank you, Paul. This is uh, part and parcel of our proud military tradition. Thank you. Mr. Chair, last na lang talaga. Thank you, Senator like Aimee Marcos. I yes, uh, like Representative Johnny Pitta. Manifest my 1,000% support to General Romeo Browner. Thank you, Representative uh, Pimentel. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, may I, uh, General Browner, sir? Yes, please, General Browner. Um, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, may I assure uh, the Honorable Johnny Pimentel that we will uh, look into the uh, problem of insurgency in uh, Surigao del Sur, uh, Your Honor. Uh, nabanggit po ninyo that I, I came from uh, the area when I was commander of the 4th Infantry Division and really until now I continue to monitor the uh, situation in the area and I promise uh, 
uh, Your Honor, that we will do something about that problem in your area. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Senator J.V. Ercito. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm glad ano, that uh, Senator Amy Marcos. So there are a lot of, ano, Mr. Chair, marami pa lang mga Ilocano dito, mga officers. Sabi nga ni Senator Amy, sabi ko, nag-usap kami, sabi namin, marami tayong kasin dito. Mga kasing itim, kuitang kita sa kulay. Anyway, um, to start my, ano, um, General Brother, uh, you will be the first Chief of Staff who will be the first beneficiary under RA 11939. Yung, you will have a three-year, hopefully, matapos mo yung three-year term. Because uh, the main uh, the rationale why this was passed so that we prevent the revolving door policy. And I think this has been the modernization of the armed forces as well as other of our projects, no? hindi lang sa AFP, is hampered because of the short term and medium term. So you will be the one that will have the chance really to implement um, and be the beneficiary and to implement an honest-to-goodness modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines. Um, anyway, what, what do you envision the armed forces um, three years from now after your tenure is over? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. I envision to have uh, an armed forces that is uh, a modern armed forces and backed up by a fully trained and uh, fully developed reserve force. So yun po yung gusto natin mangyari sa ating uh, armed forces. Our, our soldiers are uh, well trained, especially in uh, modern weaponry, and that we are modern in terms of uh, doctrines, training, and, uh, and, uh, and weapons. But more importantly, kailangan po natin ng uh, developed na reserve force. Doon po sa nakikita natin sa labanan sa Ukraine, it, it is the uh, citizens, the citizens who are really defending their nation. At uh, gusto po natin dito na magkaroon rin po tayo ng awareness na, na ganun that uh, our citizens should be ready for any eventual threat, Your Honor. Also, um, here in the Senate, the Senate President and yours truly have been very supportive of the AFP modernization. Um, earlier, uh, you mentioned also that there will be already a shift from internal defense. No? Uh, as you mentioned also, almost all um, the guerrilla fronts no, are already weakened. You know, MILF, BAF, hopefully, with the... Uh, uh, with continued development of BARM will be a thing of the past already, yung secessionist movement in central Mindanao, western Mindanao, and the, hopefully, mawala na talaga yung insurgency in the, in the eastern side of Mindanao. Now that we will be focusing on external defense, um, just to give you an, an update, last year, the AP presented, no? yung Horizon 1 supposedly the AFP, AFP modernization, Horizon 1, 2013 to 2017, ang implementation. 53 projects and ang completed pa lang, Horizon 1 was 36 out of 53. So meron pa tayong kulang. For Horizon 2, 2018 to 2022, ito po siguro yung um, maglalagay ng ating minimum credible defense posture no? sa so Horizon 2. Uh, out of the 97 projects, 19 pa lang po ang completed. No? So, now, Horizon 3, supposedly 2023 up to 2028, dapat po ito na yung, dapat nandito tayo because of the situation in the West Philippine Sea. Um, ang tanong ko na po sa inyo, General Browner, how important is it that we will be able to catch up no? dun po sa ating modernization program, which has been hampered by budget cuts, Siguro yung revolving door policy, among others. So how important is it that as legislators to help us, that will this be really helpful in us putting up that minimum credible defense posture, especially with the, circum with the prevailing situation in the West Philippine Sea? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. We believe uh, 
that if we have a strong armed forces of the Philippines, we have a strong nation. That is, that is why it is very important that uh, we modernize our armed forces of the Philippines, not so that we could be at par with the uh, developed countries. Hindi po yun yung objective natin. But our objective is really to, to be able to develop that credible defense. In other words, yung mga may balak sa ating sumakop ay mag-iisip sila. No? They will think twice before they do that. In other words, uh, yun po yung credible defense natin. So, napakahalaga, uh, Your Honor, that we really uh, focus on the modernization of our armed forces of the Philippines. And uh, nabanggit nyo po na uh, maraming factors kung bakit hindi natin nagawa yung mga projects natin. Ang isa po dito is yung kakulangan talaga po ng pondo natin. But also, we recognize na may kasalanan din po ang uh, armed forces of the Philippines kasi kung minsan ay uh, dahil po dun sa proseso natin ng uh, procurement, uh, pabago-bago rin po yung uh, mga, mga gusto nating bilhin kaya't nadidelay yung, uh, yung uh, pag-procure -pag po natin, uh, Your Honor. Well, thank you for mentioning that also how... Um, we're hopeful that under your leadership, you will have a three-year tenure, that all of this, all of the reforms, especially in the AFP modernization, procurement process, will have improvement. No? Talagang dapat kunin natin. If you procure um, air assets, um, sana yun talagang, we are not a rich nation, dapat yun talagang, um, kugaga, ano, uh, what is really, needed no yung hindi yung magsasayang tayo ng pera no uh, dati po kasi ang problema natin Mr. Chair pag uh, demand ano tayo supply driven pag yung mga technical working group for example the air force air assets acquisition they will uh, prescribe or they will recommend uh, certain air assets pero pag sinabi ng senior itong kukunin sumusunod can you assure us uh, general browner that in your tenure what will be uh, what will be recommended by the technical working group yung talagang dapat na magagamit natin yun po ang kukunin natin hindi po dahil supply driven syempre pag younger officer susunod sa ano yan senior officer so can you assure us so that we will have assets sabi mo nga may mga kagkakamali rin halimbawa po alam po po yung so-called choppers na ayaw na pong gamitin ng air force ayaw din ng lahat sayang ang pera di ba can you assure us that, uh, that, that the money that we will give to the armed forces will be money well spent? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, we are assure, assuring you, uh, Your Honor, that uh, we will be uh, doing our best to ensure that the equipment uh, that we will be procuring for our modernization program uh, will be the ones that we really need and not supply driven uh, so we have instituted in fact uh, some reforms already in our systems hindi na po talaga tayo nagfo-focus rin sa uh, major service centric na mga requirements but we are now focusing on the joint the jointness of uh, the armed forces of the philippines when it comes to the uh, requirements of our modernization so mas holistic na po yung ating uh, pananaw sa modernization rather than uh, in the past na major service centric po uh, your honor well that's good to hear and uh, likewise uh, of course we want dapat yung interoperability hindi yung iba ibang brand iba ibang nationality ang hirap dun eh so dapat mag-focus tayo on the long term that we will have a more efficient effective more effective armed forces no and uh, be rest assured that uh, in fact just to tell you uh, our chief of staff kami po ni Senate President Ming Subiri even went to uh, Sa France, sa Normandy, yeah, we left at 8 a.m. Doon po yung sa parliamentary visit, 8 a.m. Nakabalik kami, 2 a.m. We went at uh, Naval Group sa nuclear plant, pero tinignan po namin yung mga pwede nating bilhin for our armed forces. Um, yung mga Scorpion, mga uh, submarines, sabi nila, wag natin pag-usapan, pero sasabihin ko talaga, bibili tayo ng mga kung kaya. Even our missile system, to, to serve as a deterrent, and uh, Yung submarines, mahirap, pero it will be a force multiplier. Di ba? Kahit pa paano, matatakot itong mga uh, Chinese armada pag hindi na nikita. No? Be rest assured that uh, 
here in the Senate, we will do our best to uh, so that we can catch up. Kasi kayo po yung may chance na makahabol because of the year, three-year tenure. Hopefully, we can really catch up with the Horizon 2 and 3 so that we will have that credible defense posture. Anyway, our colleagues from the House are here. Sana po yung darating na AAP budget modernization sa HGAB. Sana wag na makat. Dinagdagan po natin yan dito sa Senado. So, and also like... Um, would you, would you, would you, would you also subscribe um, or support um, our chief of staff that uh, Horizon Three is really a must already that we have to start, we have to um, commence already because of the situation in the West Philippines? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we fully agree that we have to uh, already start our Horizon Three modernization program. But may I also add, uh, Your Honor? That aside from looking outward for our modernization needs, uh, we are trying to develop our uh, self-reliant defense posture, yung SRDP, meaning that we manufacture uh, locally and we buy locally. So, tinitingnan po natin itong uh, posibilidad na ito, but uh, there are certain limitations by law. Kaya nga po sana, uh, kung matulungan kami dun sa batas natin, that would allow us to procure from local sources, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Just to interject, we, that is a commitment. We'll pass it by the end of the year. Don't worry, General. Thank you, Your Honor. We're going to try to pass the uh, PDIDA with the help of Senator Jingoy by the end of the year. And we'll also try to pass the amendments of the procurement law so that you may also buy uh, the best equipment and not necessarily the most expensive, but the best equipment and the most modern. We're working on it, General, para tulungan natin yung ating armed forces. Thank you, Your Honor. And the last point, Mr. Chair, I, I also like the the vision of our Chief of Staff for the ROTC because I'm also a product of the ROTC. Hindi po ako nagpa-exempt. And I think this is really a program that I'm proud of, though, that I uh, it really helped mold me um gave me more appreciate i appreciate uh of course yung love for country patriotism um respect for elders but, but i also like what you said that hindi lang ito pure military training what is more important also that maging false multiplier in terms of disaster no that will be good uh magiging disaster management nakakatulong din po hindi lang pure military so with that um mr chair i uh i uh, would like to manifest my support to uh, general browner who i've met several times in the past uh sa marawi pa no uh, and also uh, uh puya also an eagle uh, himself uh, so i support um the confirmation of uh, general, our chief of staff Chair Browner and the rest of the officers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Just yes, uh, also, thank you, Senator JV. Or is it really, yes, 30 second, just a 30 second interjection, okay, Senator JV. Uh, General, our Chief of Staff, my dear colleague here is a major in the reservist force. E sabi ko, baka na yun, he got it when he was a mayor. Sabi ko na yun na, Senator, pwede ba siya ma-promote na to Lieutenant Colonel in the reservist force? Is that possible, sir? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we will just have to uh, to uh, submit the papers again because uh, it will be the president who will be signing the appointment orders. And uh, by the way, uh, we would like to thank our uh, Senate president for volunteering to join the Philippine Army Reserve Force. I'm very proud of that. I was not, you know, people are saying, why have you not joined even the time in Congress? Because I'm an active member of the Red Cross. I was the vice chair. Now that I'm no longer the vice chair, in the Red Cross, because you have to be neutral. We're supposed to help uh, all combatants or all suffering humanity. But in this case, times have changed. And I think we have to show to the public our patriotism at this time of need for our country, especially in our sovereign when, it questions are, when there are questions of sovereignty. And I hope that my joining the reserve force together with several senators, I've recruited Senator Sani Angara, Senator Bong Revilla, and uh, of course the promotion of Senator JBS Hersito. Uh, we'd like to show the public that uh, we're willing not only to uh, talk the walk, but walk the walk, you know, walk the talk and be able to, to serve as well when the time has come. So, maraming salamat, General.
Thank you. I'm honored to be with the Army and the AFP. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Senate President Subiri. Uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. I'm in full support of the confirmation of General Bronner, as well as all the military officers here present. Like to make special mention to Andre. Andre in Sangap, can you rise? Uh, it's been a very hardworking officer since his army aviation days. And all the officers here, you may, you may be seated. Just a policy question, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. A few weeks ago, I was watching, I was watching a Netflix movie about Pearl Harbor, Mr. President. Reminded me of a, a famous, a famous Japanese admiral, Isuruku Yamamoto. General is uh, Admiral Isiruko Yamamoto was a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. He's a graduate Japanese student at the U.S. Naval Academy, but Admiral Yamamoto was the one who masterminded and planned the Pearl Harbor attack. If my history tidbits based on Netflix would show accuracy, I'm 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 stating this for some policy questions which i raised several weeks ago in front of us is a good officer i have nothing against him uh, i will support his nomination general tampus general tampus is a product of uh, chinese military academy and several other officers uh, that's that should be that should be a badge of honor uh, having been having been in china days ago years ago perhaps because of bilateral agreements, officer exchange programs, and of course, educational opportunities, limited educational opportunities offered by the Armed Forces of the Philippines. I recall, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, that years ago, when I was still studying at the Command and General Staff College, we have foreign students as well from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, nakalimutan ko na kung saan country po yun. And I also recall when I was a battalion commander, I was made to uh, exercise that uh, goose steps for a military parade in, in Camp Aguinaldo. So, makit po yung balakang ko, uh, lahat na, ang hirap po nung goose steps. Copying it from, I think, People's Republic of China. I'm stating some policy questions. I have nothing against graduates coming from the Air, Air Force Command and General Staff Program of the People's Liberation Army Air Force in Beijing, as well as uh, those who graduated, uh, obtained their Master in Military Science from the People's Liberation Army Air Force, also in Beijing, as well as those who graduated from the Defense and Strategic Studies course from the uh, National Defense University in Changping District, Beijing, People's Republic of China. I'm just stating this for the record, Mr. President, as well as those who graduated from the graduate course in strategic management and leadership in Tsinghua uh, University in Beijing, as well as those, this is a very specialized course, uh, those who attended and graduated from the Special Operations Company Commanders course in Shi, Shi Jash Shuang Mechanized Infantry Academy in Hubei Province, People's Republic of China, as well as those who graduated from the uh, Naval Command College of the People's Liberation Army, Nanjing, Jiangsu Province, People's Republic of China. Wala po akong ano doon, wala po akong uh, masamang tinapay po doon. Yung isa pong graduate natin, nakakuha pa ng rating na 98% sa Naval Command and General Staff College, People's Liberation Army, Naval Command College, Nanjing, China, noong 2020. Ang, ang gusto ko lamang pong malaman, again, uh, retreating back to that uh, Netflix movie, is right now, uh, I should not mention this, right now we have a, a, a student studying at the National Defense College of the Philippines from China. Before, we have students uh, also coming from uh, the Chinese Armed Forces studying, attending, uh, I'm not sure if this is our uh, GSC course or, or the MNSA course. Ang tanong ko po, 
Uh, kasi naalala ko na naman yung Netflix movie. After that 1941 Pearl Harbor attack, tinigil na po yung bilateral uh, officer exchange program between the United States and China. Japan. Japan. Ang tanong ko po ngayon, ganito, Gerald Bronner, you will be able to answer this later because I have still a few interjections to make. Tuloy pa ba ho yung exchange programs natin with the People's Republic of China? Intelligence courses, mechanized division courses, airborne courses, etc., etc. Pangalawa, uh, do we still accept students coming from the People's Republic of China, uh, officers, military officers, or six ranks uh, in our uh, military schools? Yung dalawa pong question, Sean, would probably involve uh, policy issues. But then again, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, General Bronner, I see the importance of this is the positive side of having uh, foreign military students, our, our officers studying in China. One, it fosters cultural exchange and understanding. Nalalaman natin yung kultura nila, baka yung nag-aral doon, eh, marunong na magsalita. It allows military personnel coming from the armed forces of the Philippines to interact, share perspectives, and learn from each other ex experiences which can build trust, enhance communications, and even foster diplomatic relations. Siguro pwedeng ma-assign ma na uh, defense attache. Number two, uh, China's military schools are known for their rigorous training programs and academic excellence. Allowing our officers uh, to study in these institutions will provide them with an opportunity to gain valuable insights. Ala Yamamoto. If you call this the Yamamoto doctrine, we can also have our Yamamoto there. And it fosters collaboration and co cooperation by studying alongside uh, Chinese military per personnel. So, malalaman natin yung pag-iisip nila, uh, General Bronner. But, come to think of it, yung pong namumuno sa Chinese Military Commission, yung pinakamataas nila, ang, ang, ang edad po ngayon, ay, ang, ang pangalan po niya ay si uh, Zhang Zhuxia, 72 years old. Ang mga edad ng general sa China, 68 years old. So, hindi naman siguro makakahalubilo ng ating mga young officers yung mga ganong edad, pero yung mga junior officers nila, na paakyat pa lang sa Chinese Military Commission, ay, it, it will build, it will, it will foster network building and perhaps a little bit of geopolitical influence kasi katext nyo na yun, kakilala na. So ang tanong ko po, uh, General Bronner, ito pang ganitong, again, I have nothing against those who graduated uh, from uh, Chinese military schools. My list here is now uh, 17. I have nothing against them. Ipagmamalaki pa nga natin sila kasi alam na nila yung kultura ng China, marunong na mag-Chinese language, alam na yung uh, strategy ng China, etc. Et Hindi na dapat pag-usapan yun. Ito po ba, ang tanong ko, ito po ba ay tuloy pa? Ito po ba ay tuloy pa? Uh, ito po ba i-enhance pa natin, dadagdagan, o tumatanggap naman tayo ng galing ng uh, People's Liberation Army para naman sa ating mga eskwelahan, kagaya ng National Defense College of the Philippines, the Commandant General Staff College, etc., etc. Two questions, uh, General Brona. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, yung pong uh, relationship natin, military to military with uh, China, is covered under a... Um, Memorandum of Agreement on uh, Defense Cooperation since 2004. That is why uh, we are allowed to send officers to uh, China to study and uh, ganun rin po sila magpadala dito. Because we find value in sending our officers abroad, not just to China, but uh, in fact to so many countries in order for them to train and to bring back the knowledge that they gain so that we can learn from them and probably uh, apply the best uh, practices that they are applying uh, in other countries. So, sa ngayon, uh, Your Honor, after that incident last August 5, uh, the blocking of our resupply ship and the uh, water cannoning of uh, our Coast Guard, I ordered the temporary uh, stop of uh, stoppage of uh, sending uh, officers to China. In fact, uh, just uh, last week, there was a uh, communication, an invitation from China for us to send cadets to China to join the uh, 
uh, a conference of uh, cadets from all over the world. Uh, dati na po tayo nagpapadala, Your Honor. Uh, so, hininto muna natin, hindi muna tayo magpapadala this year. But uh, I have also ordered the uh, further study of uh, this memorandum of agreement on defense cooperation that we have with uh, with China. So it's not just the sending of soldiers, pero talagang pag-aaralan na po natin talaga kung ano po yung magiging uh, uh, military relations natin with China, especially after uh, the incidents that happened. Baka kailangan pong uh, i-revisit natin ito. Baka kailangan po nating uh, ayusin yung ibang provisions dito. And to make sure that China agrees with that. So, yun po yung ating direction, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you, thank you, General Bronner, Mr. Chairman. So, ngayon po, is, is, it, it is under review. But how many students do we have right now in Beijing? May I uh, confer with uh, my staff, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And my, my collateral question, uh, Mr. Chairman, General Bronner, is how many students from China are right now in the Philippines undergoing uh, uh, advanced schooling? If I may also confer with the staff on that uh, issue, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, uh, after conferring uh, with, uh, with the staff uh, concerned, uh, accordingly, we don't have any uh, students uh, right now who are studying in China, Your Honor. And we do not also have uh, Chinese students uh, studying here in, in the Philippines, Your Honor. I, I, I would agree to the uh, response of the good general. Uh, again, I reiterate, I have nothing against those studying in China. Uh, sumunod lang po sila sa directive. And they're good officers. One, one of whom is uh, Brigadier General Christopher Tampus, who is in our midst, sir. Uh, ma magaling po lahat siya mga yan. I, I also support your confirmation. Uh, please be seated, sir. Kailangan lang natin malinawan uh, when, do we, when do we stop, when do we escalate, when do we revisit and all, of course, uh, for greater national interest. So, so Mr. President, niliwanag ko lang po yun. Niliwanag, niliwanag ko lang po yun. Uh, wala po tayong masamang tinapay doon. Again, I just uh, made that reflection upon seeing that Yamamoto movie 
General Admiral Isuruku Yamamoto being a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and then planned the Pearl Harbor attack. Pero kausap niya yung mga classmate niya dun sa movie. Kausap niya yung mga classmate niya sa Annapolis. Nagko-coordinate sila. They, 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 they forged this uh, strong uh, camaraderie and empathy. So, nandun pa rin yung humanity. So, again, General Bronner, thank you for being forthright. And uh, I look forward to your uh, immediate confirmation as well as the all, all officers here present. Nothing, I have nothing against those who studied in, uh, in various defense institutions in China. Wag nyo na lang po sigurong hilingin na makuha natin yung retirement age sa China na 72 years old. Na, na admiral pa sila. Yung isa, 76 years old. Yung vice, yung vice commissioner nila is uh, 68. Yung retirement, wala ata silang retirement age. So, uh, uh, lalo na po daw ang North, North Korea. Again, uh, th thank you, General Bronner. And then, congratulations in advance to those who will be confirmed today. Uh, our bright uh, men coming from the armed forces of the Philippines. Maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Senator Tol Tolentino. Representative uh, Dante Marcoleta, please. Ibis. Ibis. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. General Browner, you were interviewed by the media in connection with the latest bullying of China when our resupply mission was sourced down by the Chinese Coast Guard. It was a hypothetical question, I think. Uh, you were asked what happens if, for example, that water cannon hit, for instance, a Philippine Navy. And I think you... Uh, replied by saying that that could be a very, very uh, dangerous and aggressive action and it could be interpreted as an war. Uh, did I correctly quoted the uh, newspaper accounts, General Broner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, that is correct, uh, Your Honor. So if on our side, it could be interpreted as an act of war. Do you think the United States of America will interpret it that way? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, I'm sorry. I uh, What I mentioned was it is it can be interpreted as an act short of war, uh, Your Honor. Yes, we heard that loud and clear. I'm asking you whether or not the United States of America will also interpret it that way. Um, the way I understand it, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, is that uh, the uh, Congress, the U.S. Congress, will have to uh, uh, discuss the matter, and uh, the interpretation would uh, depend on uh, on the interpret on the uh, discussions of the U.S. Congress, uh, Your Honor. So, General, tinatanong lang naman kita kung sila din nag-iisip ng ganun. Kasi tayo, pwede nating isipin yun. So, sila kaya naman ay nag-iisip na ganun din nga. Kasi, whether by accident, tinamaan yung ating Philippine Navy. Alam mo naman na ang Coast Guard natin ngayon, I think since 2018, Mr. President was already placed under the military command of China. Am I correct? Uh, I am not aware of this, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Yeah, it's 2018. Uh, hindi na siya civilian uh, uh, vessel. Nilagay na siya military command ng China, yung Coast Guard. Kaya nga, kung sakaling aksidente, nahit niya yung ating Philippine Navy, which was assisting at that time our small boats to provide provisions for our people in the BRP Sierra Madre, Eh, talaga namang, tama ka naman doon ang sinabi mong uh, could be interpreted 
nasa aquifer so ang tinatanong ko lang naman yun naman kaya ang America ganun din kaya naman ang interpretation niya it's a, it's a very very important question kahit na ko sakasakali kung hindi naman nila iniisip na on their side na aggressive yon at it could be interpreted as an act of war talagang wala silang malasakit sa atin Diba? Kasi meron tayong military mutual defense treaty. Tayo as their partner. Ini-interpret natin na wag niyo naman kaming ganunin eh pinanatan mo na yung Philippine Navy namin. It's an act of war. So tinatanong ko lang sa iyo, General. Sila kaya iniisip nila? Is it also an act of war sa kanila? Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, as of now, I have no uh, idea as to whether the uh, United States would also have the same uh, interpretation, Your Honor. Eh, kasi kanina sinabi mo, General, uh, you even invoked the military, the mutual defense treaty na ito yung pinagmumulan ng basis natin why we can do a joint patrol in this, uh, in the West Philippine Sea, di ba? Your Honor. So maganda tana kung is it possible? Will there be an instance na na size up mo naman yung counterpart mo from the US? Ikaw ba nga mo? Hindi mo ba iniinterpret yung pusakaling tamaan yung aming Philippine Navy? Will you not also interpret it as an ako boar? Pwede mo naman siguro ng kausapin yung counterpart mo sa Amerika. Para naman, malaman din natin yung saloobin nila, General, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Tapos nung, uh, there's a report here, nagsalita ka pala dun sa Indo-Pacific Conference in Fiji where you uh, Talk about the Chinese activities in the West Philippine Sea. Yes, Your Honor. This uh, particular conference was attended by defense officials in 20 countries, according to the report. 25, uh, 24 so, countries, including NATO, to make 25, Your okay, Honor. So, this is a very important conference, and uh, I think even your discussion about the Chinese activities in the West Philippine Sea was a good uh, uh, opportunity for your defense counterparts in these countries to know about what's, what happen what's happening in the West Philippine Sea. Did you get some sort of a consensus on how the other participants felt after your talk about this? Uh, yes, Your Honor. After the conference, uh, there was a consensus among the participate, participants to that uh, Indo-Pacific uh, Chief of Defense Conference that we all should follow a rules-based rules international order. So yun po yung uh, napag-usapan uh, naming lahat. And uh, we all agreed that this is a very important step towards achieving uh, a uh, peaceful Indo-Pacific region. So there was a very positive consensus and we won the hearts and mind of the other participants in that uh, conference in Fiji. Yes, Your Honor, we believe, we believe so. Yeah, tama rin naman yung binanggit ni Senator Tol kanina na siguro huwag na tayong magpadala ng mga officials natin sa yung mga military exchange. Parang ang tama din ang sinabi ni Senator Tulfo na parang sinasampal na Manila tayo sa ginagawa nila yon uh, Ando na yung sinagan ka ng military grade laser. Ando na yung kanyunin ka ng tubig, parang hindi na mabuti yun sa atin. Eh. Alam mo, uh, 
general nung kami nagkaroon din kami ng pagkakataon makapunta ng China they were in they invited a small group of party list in congress Como inimbita naman nila kami nagpaunlak naman kami I think that was in 2018 I had a chance of meeting the chairman of the international committee of China he's a ranking member of the Chinese Communist Party and I can still vividly recall this his first statement he made when he met our group ang sabi niya although in chinese at ini interpreter la may interpreter siya sabi niya your most distant relative is no better than your closest friend that was the opening statement so sabi ko mr chair sabi ko sa kanya our country and our people also subscribe to that proverb that there is more than there's one more proverb or an adage which is more applicable and relevant between our countries that the strong fences make good neighbors and he looked straight into my eye and tinig ng kutin siya tapos kumuha siya ng ballpen, nilista niya sa papel, siguro kinukuha niya yung pangalan ko. That was in 2018. He talk about, he talk about camaraderie, friendship, respect, fellowship, amity, charity, humanity, and brotherhood. But one year later, exactly one year later in July 2019, a Chinese militia hit and sunk a boat anchored in, in recto bank. Ganon sila, General Browner. Magsasalita sila ng maganda, pero yung gawa nila, kabaligtaran ang sinabi nila. What does it take to defend the country, General Browner? Uh, Sir, we need a uh, very strong armed forces and uh, also a uh, very strong reserve force. But more than that, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we also have to leverage our alliance with our uh, uh, ally, U.S. ally, and our partnerships uh, with our like-minded nations. Dahil naniniwala po kami na hindi rin natin, kung tayo lang po ang tutugon nitong problema sa West Philippine Sea, uh, we will not be uh, that much successful compared to if we are uh, cooperating with our uh, partners and ally. Your Honor. Thank you for that answer. In the discussion of the NTFL CAC, which has won several uh, uh, achievements on our side, winning back rebels at totoo po naman yun talagang nakita natin the success on the ground of the NTFL CAC tama si Senate President that with that NTFL CAC we were winning the minds and hearts of the otherwise rebels of our country how do we win the mind and heart of China Um, again, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we have a uh, diplomatic relations, economic relations with uh, with China. So, yung pong sa aming, uh, sa side po ng armed forces of the Philippines, we also practice military diplomacy with all our neighbors and with all our uh, partners. So, kasama rin po dito yung... Uh, yung uh, Chinese uh, military. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung uh, pag-conduct natin ng uh, uh, military diplomacy with them. In fact, yun nga po, kagabi, uh, doon sa affair ng uh, Australian 
Australian Defense Force, they invited all the uh, military attaches into their uh, ship, the Canberra, HMS Canberra. At uh, nandun yung uh, Chinese attache. Nag-usap po kami ka kahapon. No? Because again, while uh, these things are happening in the uh, West Philippine Sea, we continue that uh, military diplomacy with our uh, neighbors, especially in the uh, Pacific, Indo-Pacific region, Your Honor. Doon sa inyong conference sa Fiji, nandun din yung high-ranking defense official, di ba? Nandito sa report eh. Narinig niya yung kwento mo sa ginagawa nila sa atin, lalong-lalo na yung pambubuli nila pag nagre-resupply tayo doon sa ating BRP, Sierra Madre. General, alam ng China, nagpapakaingat-ingat talaga sila na huwag nilang tamaan yung ating Philippine Navy because they know that that will trigger the operation of our Mutual Defense Treaty. So, magkakasya na lang tayo doon sa binubuli-buli tayo ng mga yan. How much do you think will be the amount of humiliation that we can still afford to take? General. Right now, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we are now speaking up. In that conference that we had in Fiji, we were given the opportunity to present uh, a briefing to all the participants. At doon po, uh, yung title ng briefing natin is uh, Promoting a Rules-Based International Order. So, binanggit po natin na uh, talagang uh, tayo bilang isang bansa, we adhere to the Rules-Based International Order. In fact, we were one of the first signatories to the creation of the United Nations. And then uh, later on dito sa ASEAN region, tayo, we were one of the first five who uh, created that ASEAN. So, what was his reply? Well, ang pinapakita po natin doon is that uh, uh, we adhere to all of this. Ang sinabi po nila, ang reply nila is number one, they also uh, adhere to international laws. Pangalawa, uh, binanggit po nila that uh, they have a historical claim over the South China Sea. At yun po ay naka-indicate dun sa kanilang nine-dash line. And uh, pangatlo, sinabi po nila that they do not recognize the 2016 arbitral ruling. Uh, at sinabi po nila na unacceptable ito. Invalid and unacceptable. So yun po yung reply nila, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Well, you can tell him, if you meet him, that yung historical claim mo walang basis according to the arbitral ruling. Talaga namang hindi naman yun napatunayan that historically you are the one, uh, the only one fishing in the South China Sea. At the award also tell them that traditionally also, wala namang kayong mga naval forces dyan eh. At saka, wala naman kayong mga development o mga exploration dyan. So, tapos na yung arbitral award. Eh. Historically, the nine dust line was invalidated by the arbitral award. So, wala silang masasabi doon. Pero tama ka doon sa sinabi mo, kailangan mga tuwirang ka. Openly, you, you have to tell them to their faces. Kasi akala nila, ganun-ganun na lang tayo eh. In the same manner that I told the chairman of the International Committee when we met, sabi ko, nakita ko yung mga those words, big words in the Tiananmen Square. Meron silang giant billboard there. Eh. Respect, brotherhood, honesty, progress, coordination, humanity, charity, and blah, blah, blah. I told him, if we can make all these words as materials to build a strong fence between our country so that we can secure our relations into the future. 
So tiningnan niya o kinuha niya yung pangalan ko. That's all that he did. But pero tama, kinakailangan mga twiran tayo. Na general. Mr. Chairman, with the indulgence of uh, Congressman Marcoleta, if I can just yes, make yes, a 30-second interjection. Uh, General Bronner, the, the, latest, the latest map of the People's Republic of China is no longer nine dash line. It is ten dash line. Sampu na po yung guhit hanggang doon na sa Taiwan Strait. Oh, mas mahaba na masyado. So, mataas ma iba na. Hindi na pinag-uusap, uh, with all due respect, hindi na pinag-uusapan yung 9 dash line. 10 dash line na. They started with 13 dash line. In 1943, it became 11 dash line. And then it became 9 dash line. And then for this year, it's now 10 dash line. So, dumami na ho yung dashes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Huwag ka mabahala doon, General, kahit na 15 dash lines pa ilagay nila doon. Wala tayong pakialam doon. Sa pagsusulatan nila yung buong mukha nila, wala tayong pakialam doon. Kanina tinanong kita, how does it take to defend this country? Di ba, ang soldier, General, one, once he signed up for soldiery, yung buhay niya na ang nakataya, di ba? Hindi, hindi naman yung sweldo eh. Yes, Your Honor. Pag na-sign up ka to serve your country as a soldier, alam mo, buhay mo na yung tinaya mo doon. Kaya po ako, nalalaman ko na uh, hindi po ang pinag-uusapan ay yung pension dito. Eh. As the President indicated kanina, we need more patriotism in this country. Kahit na po siguro mabawasan ng konti yung pension, hindi po panggagalingan yan ng pagkakabahabahagi ng ating mga soldiers kasi ang buhay po ninyo talaga isinumpanan ninyo sa ating bansa in the defense of our country. Alalahanin lang po natin, uh, General Browner, alam po ba ninyo na yung ating mga barangay workers, mga barangay officials, gumawa po ako ng study, gaano po ba yung tinatanggap na honoraria po? Kasi ang tawag sa kanilang mga sweldo, honoraria lang po eh. Because ang trabaho nila is uh, volunteerism lang eh. Kaya hindi po salaries. Ni-research ko po yung uh, all regions natin from Region 1 to uh, the Caraga regions and Barm. Alam po ba ninyo yung sweldo po ng barangay captain? Ang average po is only about 45% of the existing minimum wage. 45%. Yung pong barangay workers naman po, yan dyan yung mga tanod, barangay health workers, yung mga meron silang badap or whatever. Lahat na po sila, pati yung sangguniyang uh, pangkatarungan. Ang average po ng tinatanggap nilang honoraria is 10% of the minimum wage. Kaya po, huwag kayong malungkot kung sakali na... Halimbawa, hingin na po ng pamahalan, ng pagtulungan na po natin yung pension. Maaari pong may magsakripisyo pa ng konti. Pero ganun po yung buhay ng soldier. Tingnan na lang po natin yung ibang manggagawa natin na halos 10% lamang po ng minimum wage. Pero yung barangay tanod po 24-7 talaga gumagawa din po siya ng kanyang katungkulan. <coughs> Salamat, uh, General Browner. Ako po ay... Nakita ko po yung inyong educational uh, background. Biliba ko sa iyo, General. At kami po ay sumusuporta sa inyong pangunguna sa ating armed forces, lalo na po lahat yung mga kasama mo na alam kong makukonfirm po lahat sa hapong ito. Mr. Chair, maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Representative Marcoleta. Before we proceed, uh, we acknowledge... Uh, Senator Francis Cheese Scudero, but before uh, we go to Senator Francis, Majority Floor Leader. Sir, uh, Mr. Chair, before we wind up, gusto ko lang pong i-acknowledge uh, like Senator Aimee, ang mga kababayan ko from Bicol. I'd like to express my full support kay Major General Noe Alberto Peñafiel, married to a Bicolana from Vincent's Camarines Norte and born in Ligao, Albay. Sir, we fully support you and uh, thank you for your service. 
like to also acknowledge Brigadier General William P. Peñafiel, currently assigned in the 9th Infantry Division in Pili, Camarini Sur, sir. Uh, we wish you all the best and we support you. I would also like to express my full support kay Brigadier General Arnel Jose Morada, sir. We wish you all the best and fully support you. And lastly, of course, as mentioned earlier, full support kay General Romeo Browner. His parents are my classmate. His parents were the classmate of my... His father was my classmate of my parents in UP class 1959. Salamat po, sir. Mr. Chair, wala bang kapampangan dito? Kahit isa lang. Meron po bang kapampangan dyan sa grupo ninyo? Tayo, ano po ang pangalan ninyo? Gusto ko pong sabihin. Ano po ang pangalan ninyo? Magpakilala kayo. Ano po ang pangalan? Ano po ang lagyuyo? Ako po ay... Brigadier General Francisco Lorenzo Jr. Tagano ka rin kayo po? Uh, taga Balangkas Santo Tomas, Pampanga ako po, sir. Dakal po, salamat. Nakabawi po ako. And reiterate ko lang po, to all the Ilocanos, my mother is Ilocano. Thank you. Uh, we excuse for a while, uh, General Browner, but... Uh, Senator Risa Untiveros has a question for Major General Freddy de la Cruz, please. She was here this early this morning and she has another hearing, Your Honor. Uh, General de la Cruz, uh, the question from uh, Senator Antiveros, because she has another uh, committee hearing. Uh, I know that you already submitted a certificate of no pending case before this committee. However, there's a record in the Commission on Human Rights which involved you in a case for torture, violation of rights in, to liberty, arbitrary detention, violation of Republic Act 7438, an act defining certain rights of person arrested, detained, or under custodial investigation, as well as the duties of the arresting, detaining, and investigating officers and providing penalties for violations thereof, and violation of Republic Act 7610, special protection of children against child abuse, exploitation, and discrimination act. The case was resolved that human rights had been committed and the administrative case with the General Court Martial Philippine Army is monitored per CHR Region 6 Resolution dated 28 November 2003. Can you tell us what happened to this case briefly, uh, General Freddy de la Cruz? Mr. Chair, Your Honors, ako po si uh, Major General Freddy de la Cruz, Commander of AFP SOCOM. Uh, that particular case has been resolved sometime in 2005, and uh, I had been cleared by the general court martial. That's all, Your Honors. Thank you, General. Anyway, uh, we got the copy and just submitted, and we will just give a copy to the decision to Senator uh, Ontiveros. And you already had the clearance from the CHR and General Court Marshal of the Philippine Army. Thank you, General De La Cruz. Here, Thank excuse. you, sir. General Browner, please. Senator Chis Escudero, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just some policy um, questions and some perhaps suggestions and reminders to our um, nominee. Um, may I proceed, Mr. Chairman? May I proceed, Mr. Chairman? Yes, proceed. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. Runner, sorry. Um, just to go back a bit to what um, Senator Tolentino said, um, um, while I appreciate the um, initial um, action taken by the good general to review um, the ongoing practice, um, at the end of the day, sir, um, I am of the belief that um, while you are chief of staff, the president is the commander-in-chief, 
By analogy, even if we have a Secretary of Foreign Affairs, the President is the chief architect of our foreign policy. And we should be all talking um, along the same lines, lest we fan the flames of um, warmongers or those who would like to see an armed confrontation between um, our two countries. And um, hopefully, whatever decision will be arrived at with finality with respect to the exchange of um, training and our officers would be arrived at, um, of course, with the full knowledge of the President as Commander-in-Chief and as the Chief Architect of our foreign policy. For my policy questions, um, sir, um, may I ask, which region in the country is um, most influenced or affected by the new People's Army? Uh, right now, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, it's uh, Region 8. Followed uh, by? Followed by. Uh, Let's do the rundown. Yes, yes sir. Uh, the Bicol region. Uh, region 5? Yes, region and 5. And then? And then uh, Karaga region. Number 3. And then? And then uh, probably uh, the Negros area, Your Honor. Number 4. And the fifth would be? Just out of curiosity, sir. The Cordilleras. We still have some uh, problems in that area, Your Honor. Now, I raise this question, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, because I remember when the budget of the NTFL CAC in relation to the BDP, the Barangay Development Program, was slashed into nearly half in 2022. And there was a reallocation of projects in line with what was stated earlier, that at the end of the day, it's not about killing our fellow Filipino using arms, guns, bombs, and mortar, but winning the hearts and minds of the people and the BDP program actually worked. Um, would you agree with that, sir? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We totally agree with that. Now, it was slashed in 2022, and when it was revived in 2023, the original listing of the BDP based on the, um, based on the listing you gave earlier was not followed anymore. Out of curiosity, sir, um, is the Ilocos region region one in the top 10 of most influenced um, or affected barangays by the New People's Army? You mentioned one to five. Um, yes, Your Honor. May I know if it's in the top 10? Uh, let me, con if I may uh, confer with my staff, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Please, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we have here the uh, Brigade Commander uh, based in the Ilocos region, and uh, according to him, it is no longer in the top 10, uh, Mr. Chair. And I completely agree. But my question, sir, is why is it in the 2023 BDP program, which the AFP was a part of in identifying most of the projects in Region 1? And there are little, if not no, projects in Region 5, Region 8, and Karaga, the top three prob the top three regions you just mentioned. I will not um, pursue the point really to its um, logical conclusion, sir, but may I urge, remind um, the AFP that this has done a lot of things in so far as winning the hearts and minds of our people. And I hope the BDP list for 2024, I have not seen it yet because we are just be beginning deliberations on the budget, will reflect the top five, the top 10 most influenced or affected barangays by insurgency in our country. Instead of following, I don't know, whatever rule or, or metrics you are following in allocating the meager resources of government in so far as BDP is concerned, sir. Sayang yes. naman yung pinagtrabawahan ng mga official natin sa mga region na yan. At ang problema ko din dun, sir, nangako yung mga sundalot official natin dun sa mga barangay na yan. Yes. Bottoms up budgeting yan. Biglang hindi darating, wala na, hindi na mabibigay. Yung magandang pangalang binuo nila sa baba, sa kada barangay at sitio, sayang po, baka mawala. Lalo na sa region namin, sa Bicol. Yes. Kung saan yes. kinabibilangan ang aking lalawigan. My second point, Mr. Um, Chairman, would be, what is the status of the creation of non-military items within the armed forces of the Philippines? Following the basic logic that military men trained, given a high salary, considered MUP, are given um, 
certain recognitions and um, benefits compared to non-military personnel. Tinraining natin ang anim na buwan, isang taon, pinag-aaral sa ibang bansa, tapos ang trabaho, driver ng general, driver ng asawa ng general, security sa kampo. The United States, Mr. Chairman, is one of the most attacked country in the world, perhaps. And yet, ang bantay sa mga kampo nila, security guard, hindi sundalo. Imbis na sinasayang natin yung sundalo na nagbabantay lang sa kampo, may MP naman. So what is the status, Mr. Chairman, of... Um, the creation of non-military items within the organization of the AFP to perform non-military functions with a view to sending and making sure that our soldiers are performing military duties alone. Uh, yes, Your Honor, we have uh, had these discussions already at the uh, general headquarters and also at the uh, various uh, major services to... Uh, uh, to have the services of civilian entities to uh, do, perform uh, functions, certain functions that are not really in the uh, competency of uh, the armed forces, which is uh, war fighting, uh, Your Honor. So, uh, pinag-aaralan po natin ito. In fact, uh, dun po sa mga budget proposals natin, we have uh, uh, we are studying on how to incorporate this this basic services, uh, Your Honor, so that. Uh, our soldiers will be able to be uh, to or will be able to focus on the on their uh, core competency your honor i have every intention of implementing that in the 2024 budget um your honor i'm sorry but um i need your help too pero madali naman eh driver security then i'll give you moe money to to um hire these um people the creation of um civilian per civilian items in so far as Clerical duties are concerned. Ngayon, yung driver sa NCR, sa Camp Aguinaldo, siguro naman pwedeng driver na lang yan na civilian. Ngayon, kung driver in a conflict area, then probably it can be um, one of our soldiers driving the military vehicle. But clearly, if they're within cities, metropolis, then they can be civilian drivers as well. Hindi lang contractual, hindi lang job order worker, pero talagang um, permanent with security of tenure workers under the AFP because it's by far cheaper, sir, to hire civilian personnel than hire additional soldiers to perform the job of a civilian. Yes, sir, I agree with that. In fact, uh, we saw this or we see this uh, model being done in other countries. So they have, uh, in fact, a very uh, small and lean armed forces and the other services are being done by the uh, civilian sector. Uh, we are moving towards that, uh, Your Honor, especially now that we are shifting to territorial defense. We will need all the uh, expertise and the, uh, the, the warm bodies of our soldiers to be able to uh, defend our ter territory, uh, Your Honor. Then help me carve that out for you, um, sir. If you can, what if you can give fifty percent? I will look for the other fifty percent in the budget to create civilian items within the AFP to start the ball rolling, running, so to speak, for the budget of twenty twenty um four. Kindly ask your staff to coordinate with us in this um regard, sir. Yes, your honor, we'll do that. My next point, my my next point, Mr. Chairman, is, ang police po meron silang design ng mga police station. City police, municipal police, provincial police, regional police. Ang COA nga, meron eh. Ang mga munisipyo, meron din. Um, it's been a long time since the AFP has not come up with one. Meaning a definite design and plan, and you are not short of manpower, technical personnel to design this, for a division, for a brigade, for a battalion, for a detachment or what you call a detachment now, so that it would be easy to source and get financing or funding, not only from the DND allocation in Dagaa, but also perhaps from the allocation of um, the DPWH, the DOTR, or other um, civilian agencies of government. But this has been long time coming. Um, may I know if within your term, this can finally be done, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, we are uh, already doing this. In fact, in the recent TICAS uh, projects of the uh, DPWH for uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have inputted this uh, uniformity in our structures. 
not just uh, in terms of the, the buildings, even uh, our fences, our gates are now uh, being uh, uh, designed so that it will be uniform across all the, uh, the, the major camps, uh, Your Honor. Will the design be finished within the year, sir, complete with the cost estimate and if at all a program of work with your engineers and with the engineers of the DPWH? Uh, we already gave the instruction to the uh, the chief engineer of the armed forces of the Philippines, uh, Your Honor, especially after our conversation uh, several months back where you uh, showed us the plans that you did for uh, our our brigade uh, in, in your region, uh, Your Honor. With the help of your General Knapp at that time, um, Peña Fiel. Um, and one last point, Mr. Chairman, about the MUP um, retirement, sir. Um, I'll ask a specific and basic question. I got a letter from the Armed Forces and Police Mutual Benefit Association and the Public Safety Mutual Benefit Fund Incorporated, basically suggesting that we unbundle for purposes of reforming the pension system of the MUP, that we unbundle the life insurance component of the pension system in the GSIS and unbundle it with a with a pension system rather under the GSIS as well. And according to the letter, and I'd like to confirm it, the insurance component is approximately 4.05% of what the GSIS is asking for of 9%. So if we unbundle it and remove it, kinakaltas naman ang dati ito sa uniform personnel natin. Essentially, ang pinag-uusapan lang nating ikakaltas is 4.95% from the basic pay of the MUP. Would that be an accurate statement, sir? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I was given a briefing by uh, the uh, Mutual Benefit Association and uh, this is what they uh, showed me. Right now, uh, the deduction is only 1.5% of uh, the base pay, uh, Your Honor. So Actually, it's cheaper than the GSIS. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, that would be beneficial if we unbundle the uh, contribution of the, the soldiers, then uh, definitely the uh, contribution, the percentage would go down if we uh, give the, that portion for the insurance to the existing uh, organizations already. At ito, dati nang binabayaran, di po ba? Dati nang kinakaltas, di po ba? Hindi ito bagong kaltas, hindi ito bagong dagbawas sa sweldo nila. Tama po yun, uh, Your Honor. I just asked from these two um, these two companies um, an FS with respect to their financial stability and health to make sure that this will not fall into the same um, fall into the same um, experience we had with um, the, its predecessors, to mention one, the RSBS, RSBS. Um, before. We would just like to see and make sure that indeed these are sustainable um, funds and how long they have existed. Hiningi na po namin sa kanila. Um, so if you're talking of 5%, um, Your Honor, sir, um, spread it over 10 years, bago dumating ng 5%, that's 0.5% naikakaltas per year incremental until we reach 5%. Um, gawin natin 1% per annum, that's 5 years. Hmm. Between 5 and 10 years, sir, that is fine by me because the other option is to simply make it apply to new officers and enlisted personnel. And if your attrition rate is at 2 or 3%, it will take us about 33 to 50 years to correct it. Would that be um, a correct statement, sir? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So would the seven to ten year would the five to ten year period to get the full balance of five percent, removing and unbundling the life insurance portion, be acceptable um, to um, our men and women in the armed forces and uniformed service? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. That would be uh, acceptable, Your Honor. Kindly consult, nevertheless, um, yes. sir, and kindly help us go through the details so that when the MUP bill reaches us, we would be moving along this line and along this um, direction with a view to coming up with a happy compromise between, of course, the interests of um, our soldiers and officers in uniform 
and that of the Department of Finance in um, ensuring the viability and sustainability of our finances as a country. Yes, Your Honor. And um, one last point, um, one last point, sir, on, on in, in this regard. I just like to state for the record that we lost actually an opportunity when the salary of police and military men were increased and nearly doubled. That should have been the perfect time that we deducted even 9% from the addition, not from the existing base. Wala sana tayong problema, wala sana tayong reklamo, pero nagdaano yun sa panahon, wala na tayong magagawa, hindi na natin pwedeng ibalik. Lumipas na, ika nga yung pagkakataong yun, but that would have been the perfect time to actually do this when it was increased during the time of former President um, Duterte. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Chispadero. Uh, Senator Aimee Marcos. Yes, yes thank you very much. And I'm in full agreement with uh, Senator Chis. Uh, we can't keep kicking the can down the road. Um, having said that, uh, may I call on uh, General Roldan, please? General Roldan? Yes, General Roldan. Uh, Apropos of uh, what Senator uh, Escudero mentioned, yung MUP na napaka-init na usapin, balikan lang po natin yung napaka-init na usapin dati nung uh, panahon ng Abril, ng Mayo, yung ating promotion scheme. You exerted a great deal of effort in helping Congress pass RA 11939, which revised the tenure of our top AFP officials, as well as, among others, the uh, 36,000 enlisted uh, personnel. The law, as we all know, was approved only last May 17. But nevertheless, do you have some uh, kind of feedback from the ground regarding the changes, even uh, at this early date? Una -una po, magandang umaga, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Sir, ang nakuha po namin, Madam, na feedback from our uh, officers and enlisted personnel are very favorable. Uh, ang pagtaas po ng aming compulsory retirement age mula 56 to 57 ay uh, winelcome po ng ating mga kasundaluhan, pati na po ng ating uh, mga opisyal, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Pero laging may nasasagasaan, di ba? Yun ang problema. So is there anything that we need to do? We are all fully aware that this is a work in progress. So inevitably, may nabebenepisyohan. Meron naman nahuhuli. Ano sa palagay ninyo ang uh, ma isasagawa para sa kanila? Tama po yan, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, sa anuman pong batas, hindi po lahat ay masaya. Meron pong mga nailag na nailagay sa uh, disadvantageous position. But uh, sa aking pong personal na opinion, napakaaga pa po upang uh, magkaroon uli ng uh, panibago dito sa batas na ito. As uh, tulad po ng nasabi ko kangina, maganda po ang naging reaksyon ng buong uh, sandatahang lakas. At uh, nais ko pong uh, i-consider na ano man pong uh, pagbabago pa ay maaari po natin sigurong uh, may konsidera sa pagkalipas pa po ng mga ilang taon. Sa nakita ko naman po ang uh, naging reaksyon lang naman po ay uh, doon po sa mga uh, hindi po uh, yung pong tinamaan po ng transition. Kasi po uh, sa pag-implementa po ng batas, meron pong uh, ilang mga opisyal kasunduluhan na hindi po uh, uh, Maging, naging disadvantageous po sa kanila yung initial implementation. Mr. Thank you. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, General Roldan, and we certainly endorse your uh, uh, promotion, being fully aware of the uh, pivotal role you played in that piece of legislation that affects all our uh, top officials as well as our men. Thank you very much. I would like to call on uh, another general, please, Mr. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. General Roldan. Yes, it's Brigadier yes, General Andre B. Santos of our Armor Division, please. Yes, thank you. I am uh, a uh, great crusader for our um, self-reliance program. Clearly a banner effort under my father's administration. Um, 
which perhaps should be revived again today, given the uh, effort for uh, territorial uh, security. As a brigade commander in the armored division, what portion, if any, of our present vehicles and armored carriers in your unit operating um, are actually locally produced or assembled? Uh, magandang tanghali po, ma'am. Um, uh, all the armored vehicles of the armored division are uh, produced abroad, ma'am. Wala ni isa ang gawa sa Pilipinas. Wala po, ma'am. Um, Dati-rati, alam natin na meron na tayong mga bahagi ng tanke at iba pa na ginagawa dito sa atin. So, to the best of your knowledge po, what possible spare parts man lang, if any of the vehicles which your unit operates can be locally fabricated or produced? Alam natin, pati Vectronics nun, ginagawa naman natin. Ano ba nangyari at uh, dapat bang baguhin? Um, in my own opinion, ma'am, um, marami po mga piyesa ng mga uh, ng armored vehicles natin can be locally procured dito sa atin, ma'am. Um, although, Yung mga ibang kagamitan natin is US made or the Simba was produced in the UK. A lot of the parts, a lot of the, um, even the internal equipment, the signal equipment, the communication equipment, even the guns can be locally uh, produced or procured, uh, ma'am. Yes, uh, perhaps uh, by way of helping uh, the Senate and the passage of this uh, new SRDP program, you can provide us with some insight given that you're in charge of this very critical division. It's not a question, but it's a request. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, for uh, as a brigade commander, ma'am, and the end user of this uh, equipment, ma'am, ang um, Request lang po sana namin is there will be more readily available parts for this equipment. Especially yes. na medyo matatanda na po talaga siya, ma'am. Yun nga, ang bubulok na eh. Kaya nga... We, we have to find multiple sources for this for this equipment. Ma yes, many of them are no longer manufactured from the uh, country of origin. Hindi po yes po, ma'am. Yes, so, uh, maybe I'll just request in writing if you could perhaps uh, provide us with those that you think could actually be uh, manufactured or somehow fabricated in the Philippines. Thank you, General yes, Santo. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you. And um, last na lang po, Mr. Chairman, Commodore Dwight Stephen Dulnoan. Sa Naval Special Operations Command lang po. Yes, Commodore, a matter of curiosity lang po. Um, the skills and the importance of our soldiers under the NAVSOG, the Naval Special Operations Group, dubbed the uh, Philippine Navy SEALs, has never been doubted. Nonetheless, as we begin to give more and more emphasis on territorial defense, are there any changes in training, equipment, doctrine, so that they are more up to date on the external security operations? Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, the Navy, ma'am, uh, and, and of course the Naval Special Operations Command, we update our doctrines, our training, and with the, um, with the fast de development of technology, we also have to keep up with this. So yes, ma'am, uh, we are evolving, we are dynamic in our training and our um, and our programs. Now, with regards to territorial defense, the armed forces uh, mandate so is actually uh, territorial defense. And uh, although we have concentrated lately on on terrorism and internal defense, uh, we never kept ourselves in the cold or in the dark with regards to the development of uh, protecting our territories. So uh, I would confirm ma'am that we are prepared also for territorial defense. Ilan po ba yung NAVSOG? Sa ngayon, ilan tropa ninyo? Uh, the whole NAVSOG, ma'am, we have 850 personnel, but the SEALs are only one-third of that. There's only 200 of us. Yung nga, wala pa raw 200 eh. Ang actual, tama po ba? 
uh, we have uh, for actual seals, ma'am, uh, we have around 285. 285. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there no plan to increase their number as well as uh, broaden their presence given the problems we have, more or less entirely naval in character? Uh, actually, ma'am, we are conducting training for seals every year, and we have as much as uh, two courses a year. But uh, because of the uh, nature of the training, it is actually very difficult. We have to weed out, well, not only mentally, physically. So, so Commodore uh, Duno, and you're saying that's a matter of budget. To my mind, this highly specialized force would be uh, pivotal and uh, strategic in the issues uh, surrounding the West Philippine Sea. So perhaps the NAVSOG is one area that we can uh, focus upon and develop. Um, the Air Forces uh, and the Navy uh, understand that, ma'am. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, there are lots of corners of the Armed Forces and of the Navy that have to be developed, and we couldn't concentrate uh, in just one area. Although we are, the NAVSOCOM is always fighting for a bigger piece of the cake, and we are being addressed also by our hierarchy. Uh, and uh, with the number of uh, personnel that is uh, that well, that volunteer, uh, we have no uh, qualms, ma'am, or shortages, uh, because Tamsokam is a it's a, it's a uh, voluntary unit. So um, and... yes, um, I understand, Commodore. The point being that. Uh... Some distinguished military strategists have repeated time and again that the NAVSOG could be a uh, crucial, quick win in the effort to modernize the Navy, simply because, obviously, the uh, time and the budget required to um, weaponize ourselves with the adequate number of frigates and uh, other uh, defense uh, equipment would be much, much greater, whereas uh, just expanding this force, which is already there, would uh, deliver us very, very quick win. So this is for your consideration, given that uh, many experts have, in fact, suggested it in the recent past. Thank you very much, Commodore. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, okay. Chairman. That will be all. Thank you, uh, Senator Aimee Marcos. Um, yes, I am. Can I, can, uh, General Browner, please? Meron lang ako isang tanong. Bago tayo, ano, adjourn. Um, General CS, uh, totoo ba na wala, pag nag-schooling yung sundalo, wala na daw allowance? Uh, <laughs> Talo daw tayo sa Southeast Asian partners natin. Yes, Your Honor, that is true, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Pa 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 paano kami makatulong? Wala, wala. Wala, wala. Cut na lahat eh. They will be on their own. Ang libre lang yung pagbiyahe. Pag yung stay doon, wala talaga. So, kawawa yung pag-uwi doon. Kaya, oh, nag-overtime minsan. Yes, ma'am. So, how can we help you on that? Uh, in the past, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, uh, there used to be a counterpart uh, from the Philippine government. Yes. Oh. A counterpart allowance, uh, schooling allowance, uh, because the allowance that comes from the host country differs. Iba-iba po. Yung, uh, yung ibang bansa, they cover everything. The others, uh, just uh, the schooling, but you provide for your uh, living expenses and so on. So... It is very. It would be very helpful, uh, Mr. Chair, if uh, there would be a counterpart uh, allowance from uh, the Philippine government. Okay, we will work on that. No promises, but we will work on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Because, ano eh, I think uh, there are other countries. Bawal na yung pag nagschooling ka, may time ka na pwede ka mag anong trabaho ba? Pinagbawal na. Para naman lang may madala na balikbayan box para sa pamilya. Eh, six months yun, one year. So, yes, ma'am. Um, yes, uh, sige, uh, General uh, Brown. Thank you. We'll, yes. you know, no promises, but we will look into that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mabait ni mga sundalo eh. Sumusunod lang talaga. 
So yung sweldo lang, uh, Your Honor, ang uh, ginagastos doon. Yes. Oo. Is, the, is this an executive order? Or sa inyo yung sinuspend? Or sa armed forces? Was it an executive order? Or is it switch budget sa AFP? Sir, according to our Jago, it, it was an executive order that uh, terminated that. Nandito naman si ate. Thank you, General. Uh, we will look into that. Anyway, uh, before that, uh, uh, our uh, CA contingent in the House, uh, Representative Ramon Guico, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Allow me to manifest my full support for the confirmation of uh, General Romeo Browner Jr., uh, my fellow Ilocano, and the flag and senior officers before us today. I salute their sacrifices and devotion, along with their families and loved ones, to protect the country and its people, no matter what the cost. Their professional records of accomplishment highlights their incredible dedication to the service and the qualifications required of their ranks. Surely, the government and our constituents can only stand to gain with their confirmation. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Representative Ramon Guico. Uh, from Congressman Sa Sagarbaria, his manifestation of support for the following officers, General Romeo Browner Jr., Brigadier Gener General Joey Escanillas, and Brigadier Elmer Suderio. And also uh, from former Basilan Governor, now Representative Mujib Hataman, to Brigadier General Soderio. Before we adjourn, uh, I would like to ask uh, Commodore Edward Ike D. Sagon, D. Sagon, please. One minute, Your Honors. <laughs> Are you from Cavite, Jones de Sagan? Your Honor, I'm from uh, Batanes. 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 Yes. Off the record, ayoko lang lalabas to. Pero itatanong, nandito rin si Ma'am Lani. Bakit ako kayo tinatawag na, ano yun? Swarma King. So, ikaw ba yun? Mr. Swarma King of Cavite? Ikaw ba yun? Swarma. Shawarma. Shawarma, King, oh, Shawarma. Sorry, Bisaya, Magunidong. Yes, sir. Shaw Shawarma. Yeah. Waray Pagyud. Oh. Uh, is it true? Um, I was... Sikutum na ako eh. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. We, during our uh, junior um, days, uh, junior officer days, um, to uh, supplement our, uh, our meager um, wages then, uh, we ventured on putting up um, a shawarma stall with one of my classmates. So that's why we were called the shawarma king. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Commodore. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Majority floor leader and our head CA contingent. Ah, uh, lumagpas na yung gotong ko eh. <laughs> uh, since the majority floor leader is not here, I will act as the majority floor leader now. Mr. Chair. I move to recommend the plenary, to, uh, the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Romeo S. Browner Jr. to the rank of General Armed Forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. Second. There is a motion duly seconded without any objection that at the interim appointment of Romeo S. Browner Jr. to the rank of General is hereby approved. Majority floor leader. Likewise, Mr. Chair, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointments and to give its consent to the nomination of 29 generals, flag officers, and senior officers of the armed forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. There is a motion duly seconded without any objection. The here uh, the same is hereby approved.
Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Chair, there's being no other matters to discuss. I move to adjourn the meeting. On motion to the Majority Floor Leader, without any objection, congratulations, General Browner and the officers, uh, members of the Commission Appointments, Dagan kay Salamat. Uh, on the motion of the Majority Floor Leader, without any objection, the meeting is hereby adjourned.
the second plenary session of the Commission appointments on the second regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. Today will be led in prayer by our distinguished colleague from Surigao del Sur. Is he here? No, it will be uh, rather, I'm sorry. We will be led in prayer today by the distinguished, our distinguished colleague from uh, Cavite, no other than Senate, uh, Congresswoman, uh, and also a uh, possible senatorial candidate, uh, Lani Mercado Revilla. Oh my gosh. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God. Our Heavenly Father, as we resume the commission on appointments plenary session today, we seek your holy intercession and guidance in giving the body's consent and confirmation to our country's living heroes, the generals and flag officers and senior officers of the Department of National Defense. We truly serve, who truly serve to the best interests of, our, of your people and our country. Allow us to carry out meaningful decisions that will help shape the future of our nation. May your love allow us to accomplish our goals in the pursuit of truth for your greatest glory. We ask these in your holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen. This way standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Secretary, please uh, all the roll of members. The Honorable Members of the Commission on Appointments, Maria Lourdes Nancy S. Binay, Virginelle G. Biron, Alan Peter Compañero S. Cayetano, Joseph Victor G. Ejercito, Francis Cheese G. Escudero, Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, Albert S. Garcia, Greg G. Gasataya, Christopher Bong T. Go, Ramon N. Guico Jr., Risa Ontiveros, Loren Legarda, Oscar Oka G. Malapitan, Rodante D. Marcoleta, Aimi R. Marcos, Lani Mercado Revilla, Jose Gay G. Padiernos, Johnny T. Pimentel, Grace Poe, Jordin Jesus M. Romualdo, Manuel T. Sagarbaria, Francis Tol N. Tolentino, Luis Raymond L. Ray F. Villafuerte Jr., Cynthia A. Villar. The chairperson is present. With 14 members present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on say, August 9, 2023, and consider the same as approved. There being no objections, the motion wants to approve. Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense on the ad interim appointments and nomination of 30 generals, flag officers, and senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. There being no objections, the motion wants to approve. Mr. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, Representative J.J. Romualdo, be recognized. Our distinguished colleague from the great uh, and beautiful province of Camigin, Congressman J.J. Romualdo, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, 
distinguished members of the Commission on Appointments, good afternoon. This representation, as chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the uninterim appointment of the current Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Romeo S. Browner, Jr., to the rank of General and on the ad interim appointments and nomination of 29 generals, flag officers, and senior officer of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Your committee, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the public hearing, determined that they are fit and qualified to be promoted to the ranks where they are appointed, and therefore ruled to recommend to the plenary for the Commission to confirm their ad interim appointments and to give its consent to the nomination. It is my honor, Mr. Chairman, and privilege to recommend the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Romeo S. Browner to the rank of General. General Browner is a proud descendant of a long line of military men and is committed to continuing a legacy of service and sacrifice of his ancestors. He is a strong and decisive servant leader known for his professionalism, dedication, and commitment to the defense of the Philippines. He took the helm of the Armed Forces of the Philippines as its Chief of Staff on July 21, 2023, after serving as the 65th Commanding General of the Philippine Army on December 10, 2021. He is a proud member of the Philippine Military Academy, Makatao class of 1989, and graduated salutatorian. He ex exemplified the highest levels of excellence in his military schoolings, graduating number one in Special Forces Operations course, Intelligence Officers course, and the AFP Comptrollership course. In addition, he obtained three master's degrees, master's in information management from the Ateneo de Manila, graduate school of business, master's in business administration from the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand, and from the European School of Management, Oxford, United Kingdom, and master's in strategic studies from the United States Army War College and in March 2023, General Browner was inducted into the U.S. Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame in 2022. He also demonstrated the, fine, the finest ideas of servant leadership in his previous designations as Brigadier, Brigade Commander of the 103 Infantry Brigade during the aftermath of the Marawi Siege in 2017 and Commandant of the Cadets in the Philippine Military Academy, wherein he played an important role in eradicating hazing and maltreatment in the Cadet Corps. Later, he served as the first Deputy Chief of Staff for Financial Management, or J-10, of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and served as Commander of the 4th Infantry Diamond Division. In 2013, he was an awardee of the Metrobank Foundation and Rotary Club of Makati, the Outstanding Philippine Soldiers, or TOPS. General Browner is a recipient of the Philippine Legion of Honor, the Silver Cross Medal, the Gold Cross Medal, and the Bronze Cross Medal, as well as the Lapu-Lapu Award by former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. In 2022, he was conferred by His Majesty, the King of Malaysia, the Honorary Award of the Malaysian Armed Forces Order for Valor, Gallant Commander of the Malaysian Armed Forces, first degree in recognition of his untiring dedication to fostering bilateral relations between the Philippine Army and the Malaysian Armed Forces and the Legion of Merit by the United States of America the following year. Mr. Chairman, Your Honor, it is my honor and privilege to recommend the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Romeo S. Browner, Jr. to the rank of General Armed Forces of the Philippines. 
I so move, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Please proceed with the... Should we tackle them one by one, uh, Your Chairman? Uh, or with the uh, Chief of Staff first, your, your, uh, yes, Mr. Okay. Chairman, then we will continue with the other officers. Majority Please, Leader. Mr. Mr. Chair, before we open the motion, there are a number of members of the Commission who would like to deliver their seconding speeches. May we now recognize our, our Chairman of the House Contingent, Representative uh, Mon Giko. Our distinguished colleague from Pangasinan, Co-Chair of the Commission, Congressman Mon Chinguiko, is recognized. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. It is my honor to signify my support for the confirmation of the appointment of uh, General Romeo Browner Jr. under the Department of National Defense. They have received numerous uh, commendations for valor, admirable service, and life-saving acts. Indeed, they have proven to be very capable of assuming the duties and responsibilities of their respective positions. Considering this, I hereby second the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of uh, General Romeo Browner, Jr., the under the Department of National Defense. Just agina kadakayo kanti pamilyayo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Co Chair. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator Jingo Estrada? Senator Jingo Estrada from the city of San Juan is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I rise to express my support to the gallant generals, senior officers, and uniformed personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, led by their Chief of Staff, General Romeo Browner, Jr. The AFP has been hogging the headlines recently due to the tense situation in the West Philippine Sea. Sa kabila ng banta sa kalambuhay, pananakot at pagigipit ng isang superpower, Hindi po nagpapasindak ang ating mga kawaning, ang ating mga bayaning kawal. Our brave men and women in uniform have remained loyal to their calling with utmost patriotic fervor and performed their constitutional mandate as defenders of the Filipino nation. My snappy salute to all of you. Let me also put into the record my support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Lieutenant General Broner as a four-star, full-fledged general. When I had an official visit in Fort Bonifacio, Philippine Army last April as chairperson of the Senate Committee on National Defense and Security, I mentioned that General Broner had the makings of the next AFP Chief of Staff. Because of the way he talks, he presents and conducts himself, and the manner he effectively leads the biggest component of the armed forces of the Philippines. At hindi nga po ako nagkamali, or should I say, nagdi lang anghel nga ako. Congratulations and we look forward to a strong leadership in the AFP amidst all the issues surrounding the defense establishment, from the continuing maritime disputes and foreign incursions in the West Philippine Sea, the urgency of implementing the modernization of military assets and building a credi credible defense posture up to the simmering discontent within the ranks arising from the proposed reforms in the MUP pension. Tutulungan po kayo ng inyong Senado sa ilalim ng pamumuno ni Senate President Juan Miguel Subiri upang kayo ay magtagumpay sa inyong mabuting hangarin para sa ating sandatahan lakas sa susunod na tatlong taon ng inyong maximum tour of duty bilang AFP Chief of Staff. Mr. Chair, let me also put on record my personal endorsement to Major General Romel Roldan, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel, or J-1, who has been of great help to the Senate Committee on National Defense in the passage of the bill amending Republic Act 11709, which has since been enacted as Republic Act 11939. Kasama ko po siya sa mga briefings dito sa Senado at kahit ipapatawag namin na linggo, dumarating po siya. He has been patient and very professional in our sessions. He has also been helping us and the economic team in doing the rounds nationwide in major military camps from Baguio to Zamboanga to explain to our soldiers and solicit their insights 
about the proposed reforms in their pension. That's all, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, distinguished colleague. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Sorry. Senator Tolentino? Our distinguished colleague from the great province of Cavite, Senator uh, Stol Tolentino is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good morning to our kasama dito sa Commission on Appointments. Mr. President, I join our other colleagues in supporting the confirmation of General Romeo Saturnino Bronner, Jr. General Bronner's career trajectory is a testament to a lifetime of service exemplified by utmost dedication, loyalty, resilience, excellence, and patriotism in his 30 long years of military service. His calling to military service is deeply rooted in, his, in their family. Prior to graduating as salutatorian from the Philippine Military Academy as part of the Makatao class of 1989, General Bronner served as an ROTC cadet in the UP Vanguard. From humble beginnings, he embarked on a journey that saw him rise through the ranks guided by his steadfast dedication to duty and passion, contributing to a better world. His accomplishments in the field have been nothing short of extraordinary, demonstrating his ability to navigate complex challenges with poise and determination. What sets General Bronner apart is not only his individual accomplishments, but also his remarkable family background. Hailing from a clan of military officers, educators, lawyers, doctors, and public servants, our general's lineage has consistently demonstrated outstanding dedication and excellence in their respective field, fields. In fact, General Bronner's family holds a record of producing the most PMA graduates from a single clan, a testament to their commitment to serving and protecting our country. Moreover, it is worth noting that General Bronner has broken barriers by becoming the first Cordilleran to hold the significant position and rise to the rank of general as the 60th Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. This milestone represents not only his individual triumph, but also an inspiration for others striving to overcome challenges and achieve their goals. Tunay nating nakita ang kanyang katapangan at pagiging tapat sa bayan, sa mahabang tala ng kanyang mga nagawa, kabilang narito ang pagsugpo ng mga komunista, lalo na sa niyang, napakalaki niyang parte noong panahon ng Marawi Siege noong 2017. Idagdag pa natin ang kanyang kahangahangang plano para sa kabuuan ng sandatahang lakas ng Pilipinas. As he previously mentioned, Mr. President, and I support his five focus areas dubbed as unity or unification, normalization, internal security operations, territorial defense, and youth. His staunch call for the protection of our territory against foreign aggressors is a true testament of his patriotism. Gusto ko rin pasalamatan si General Bronner kasama ang 29 other senior officers present here today sa kanilang pagsuporta sa Philippine ROTC Games na ginaganap po ngayon sa lungsod ng Sambuanga City at katatapos lang po natin noong nakaraan linggo sa lungsod ng Iloilo at papunta naman po tayo sa makasaysayang lalawigan ng Kabite para sa Luzon qualifying leg sa susunod na linggo bago po idaos ang national championships. Congratulations General Bronner on your well-deserved appointment and forthcoming confirmation, kabilang na rin po ang dalawang putsyam na magigiting na opisyal na naririto ngayon. May your tenure be marked by accomplishments that inspire and uplift us, and may your dedication to the service of the nation and the Filipino people continue. Maraming salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Senator Tolentino. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Senator J.V. Ejercito? My distinguished colleague, uh, the younger brother of... Uh... Senator Jingo Estrada, Senator J.V. Ejercito of San Juan is also recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Likewise, um, being the first um, Chief of Staff, uh, Gerald Bronner will be the beneficiary of RA1139. He will have a term of three years, and probably, Mr. Pres uh, Mr. Chair, the AAP modernization that we all long for, especially in these very challenging times, would uh, finally happen. Now that um, we will have a chief of staff that will serve for three years, at least we will have at least mawawala na in uh, revolving door policy, and we can already have continue. We can already continue and have a long-term plan 
for the AFP modernization. Again, um, my congratulations in advance and more power to uh, General Bronner and as well as the 29 um, senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. My snappy salute to all of you. Thank you very much, Senator JV. Mr. Chair, may we now recognize Lani Merc Congresswoman Lani Mercado Revilla. Our distinguished uh, colleague, the CA, Congresswoman Lani Mercado Revilla of the great province of Cavite is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues of this commission, this representation supports the motion that we affirm the nominations and ad dirim appointments of the 30 generals and senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. To all of you who have chosen to serve our beloved nation, we extend our deepest gratitude. Your commitment to upholding the principles and values upon which our country stands serves as an inspiration to us all, especially in the face of challenges like the ongoing West Philippine Sea dispute and the fight against armed rebels. As we navigate these complex and sensitive issues, a united and well-prepared military force is essential to protect our territorial integrity and our people. We recognize the critical role our uniformed men play. Today, we honor your commitment by ensuring your continued growth and advancement. As you remain at the forefront of our nation's defense, thank you for choosing to serve our beloved nation. God bless the work of your hands. God bless the Philippines. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Distinguished Colleague. Mr. Chair, um, Senator Bongo, Senator Lauren Ligarda, Representative Sagarbaria, Representative Johnny Pimentel, Representative Abed Garcia, Representative Padiernos would wish to submit their seconding speeches in writing to be incorporated in the journal of today's session. I so move, Mr. Chair. There being no objection to the motion, motion is approved. Mr. Chair, before uh, we finalize the motion, I would like special mention uh, for the following nominees under the PMA Tanglao Diwa Class of 1992. I would like to specially mention the following. Major General Romel Roldan of the Philippine Air Force, Major General Freddy De La Cruz of the Philippine Army, Brigadier General Antonio Mangoroban, Brigadier General Efren Morados, Brigadier General Juliano C. Llarenas of the Philippine Air Force, Brigadier General Andres Santos of the Philippine Army, Brigadier General Francisco Lorenzo Jr., Brigadier General Gulliver Senyeres, Mr. Chair. On the part of the majority, Mr. Chair, may we reiterate the earlier motion for the Commission to confirm the ad interim appointments and give its consent to the nomination of the aforementioned 30 generals, um, flag officers, uh, and leader, senior... Yes, sir. We're just tackling General Browner for the moment. Okay. It has not been nominated yet by the chairperson, the others. So it's only for the chairperson. I withdraw. Staff. withdraw. <laughs> but they, they, they appreciate your mentioning of their names <laughs> and your support for them. Sorry, so Mr. Chair. No worries. No problem. Uh, may we recognize the uh, chairman of the Defense Committee? Ah, maybe we'll act on General Browners first, and then uh, we'll proceed with the others, if that's all right with the good majority leader. Mr. Chair, may we now uh, reiterate the earlier motion for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of General Browner? I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I just would like to say and put on record, General Browner is one of the most bemedaled officers of his generation. For the past eight years of his 38 years in military service, he was assigned to several times in the Mindanao region, held various posts in the cities of Davao and Cagayan de Oro City, and the provinces of Maguindanao and Lanao Sur, and was given the greatest challenge of maintaining peace and order in our region. And, sir, it was a job well done. I am elated to be part of history today to preside over the confirmation of General Browner will be the first Chief of Staff who will have a fixed term of three years of duty to ensure that there's a proper implementation of our AFP modernization program and the other programs of the Armed Forces. General Browner, who is not just an officer, but a true gentleman, with exemplary display of patriotism, valor, and professionalism. 
a man truly deserving of the position of Armed Forces Chief of Staff. We thank you, sir, for your service, and we salute you for a job well done. Without further ado, there being no objection to your appointment, the Commission hereby confirms the ad interim appointment of General Romeo S. Browner, Jr. as the Armed Forces Chief of Staff. Congratulations, sir. Majority Leader. Mr. Chairman, we will now recognize the Chairman of the Defense Committee, Congressman J.J. Uh, Romualdo. Yes, a distinguished colleague from the beautiful island province of Camigan, Congressman J.J. Romualdo is recognized. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. I also would like to recommend that this August body confirms the ad interim appointments and gives its consent to the nomination of the 29 generals, flag officers, and senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, namely, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Romel P. Roldan to the rank of Major General. Noe Alberto Q. Piñafiel to the rank of Major General. Freddy T. De La Cruz to the rank of Major General. Salvador Henry H. Quinto to the rank of Commodore with a waiver of personal appearance, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Arnel Jose J. Morada to the rank of Brigadier General. Antonio G. Mangoroban Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General. Maynard G. Camarao to the rank of Brigadier General. Ferdinand Melchor C. De La Cruz to the rank of Brigadier General, Efren F. Morados to the rank of Brigadier General, Peter B. Borgonio to the rank of Brigadier General, Juliano C. Llarenas to the rank of Brigadier General, Elmer B. Soderio to the rank of Brigadier General, Felix Ronnie B. Babak to the rank of Brigadier General, Marion T. Ancal to the rank of Brigadier General, Andre B. Santos, the rank of Brigadier General, Edward Ike M. D. Sagon, to the rank of Commodore, Christopher C. Tampos, to the rank of Brigadier General, Dwight Stephen M. Dolnuan, to the rank of Commodore, Jesus Nelson B. Morales, to the rank of Brigadier General, Taharudin P. Ampatuan, to the rank of Brigadier General, Anton G. Abrina to the rank of Brigadier General, Francisco F. Lorenzo Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General, Gulliver L. Sanires to the rank of Brigadier General, Ulysses S. Marquez to the rank of Brigadier General, Joey A. Escanillas to the rank of Brigadier General, William P. Piñafiel Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General, Simplicius G. Adiser to the rank of Brigadier General, Eugene Henry Z. Cabuzao to the rank of Colonel, Philippine Army, and Isagani O. Christi to the rank of Brigadier General. I so move, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Joy Leader. Mr. Chair, Representative Sikiting Sagarbaria would, we, would like to submit his seconding speech for Elmer Belen Suderio to the rank of Brigadier General and for Joey Almendralejo Escanillas to the rank of Brigadier General. Uh, he wished that his uh, speech be incorporated into the journal of today's session. I so move, Mr. Chair. There be no objection. The motion is approved. Mr. Chair, on the part of the majority, we'd like to reiterate the earlier motion for the Commission to confirm the ad interim appointments and give its consent to the nomination of the aforementioned 30 generals, flag officers, and senior officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. Before I act on that motion, I, whenever I address, whenever we address members, the men and women of the Armed Forces, I never fail to mention them. The, the collective, the collective uh, uh, 
uh, attitude of the commission on appointments when it comes to appointing our men and women of the armed forces, which is to thank you. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa sakripisyo at pagmamahal nyo sa inang bayan, sa servisyo nyo sa inang bayan. We want to thank you all for your loyalty to our flag, for your patriotism and valor in guarding our sovereignty, and your willingness to make the ultimate sacrifices for our beloved country. Once again, you are the vanguards of democracy in our country. We cannot have these hearings today. We cannot have these institutions in place without the brave men and women or our, of our armed forces. Kaya, ika nga, yung ginagawa po namin ito, it is our willingness to make sure that your confirmation is done due haste and uh, so that you can go back to your duty in guarding our beloved country. Maraming maraming salamat muli sa inyong servisyo. May God bless all the men and women of our beloved armed forces. With that, there being no objection to the appointments, the commission on appointment hereby gives the consent and nomination to the aforementioned 29 general and flag officers and senior officers of the armed forces. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Mabuhay po kayo. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, there be no other matters to discuss. I move to adjourn. Uh, before we adjourn, just a reminder, we'd like to have a photo op opportunity with our men and women of the armed forces. There being no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader, the commission is hereby, or the session is hereby adjourned.